Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Welcome in, welcome in! Thank you so much for the raid! I was just about to get off the, the uh, starting soon screen and then the, 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 the raid happened. Thank you so much! <clears throat> How was your stream? How was your stream? But also, uh, today's first. That is Ghost. Hi, Ghost. Ghost is today's first. Black Cats is today's second, which means third one is still not taken yet. So if you wanna, if you wanna get get that, you can you can you can hurry up and do that now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you had a good stream. Um, so for those those of you new here, uh, my name is Vepricos. You can call me Vep Vepri. Uh, or Pia. Uh, all, all of them are good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a Norwegian streamer. We are currently playing a game called Paranormasite. I've uh, decided that that is my Saturday game. And um, it's like a, a Japanese uh, spoopy visual novel type of, type of thing. It's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty fun. I, I enjoy it. Um, tur 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 is, wait, single? Single? But, um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. And yesterday, for those of you who weren't here, we finished our first playthrough of uh, Near Replicant, which was exciting. Um, that means we're not completely done with the game yet. Not done yet. We are gonna gonna continue with Route B on Wednesday, so that's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, because it's not taken. Mm. That's that's true. That is true. Maybe it wants to stay single though. You don't know. You don't know. Um. We'll see how long it takes, or if people coming in later won't notice the whole time like that one stream. It's happened quite a few times, actually. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, uh, when it happened last time. Uh, it is pretty funny. <laughs> but it's like, I understand, because when I go into a stream that has been going for a while, um, I don't really check the, 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 the first, second, third redeem either so you know it happens it happens but how are you guys doing today though how is your saturday going so far i was like is it saturday today or is it friday these days these past few weeks i've kind of felt like thursdays have been like friday so then it's like i get two saturdays in a row and it's been great <laughs> That's that's been great because like oh no it's Saturday again, <laughs> you know you know. Lone Wolf third exactly, exactly. But yeah, uh, I'm I'm uh, I've been looking forward to playing more of this uh, this game. I haven't really um I haven't really played a lot of visual novels, to be honest, but the ones that I have tried, I really enjoyed. So I've started looking into more, and I bought a couple of new ones. I'm not going to be playing those on stream, though. But I got uh, got a couple of new ones a few days ago. And, uh... Hey, Ashen one is today's third! <laughs> Look at that! Um... And, um... Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. As some of you might know, at the beginning of the year, or like, I guess it was started in like December, maybe? So it was um, a little bit last year, a little bit this year, that we played a game called Ghost Pia, which 
I got a free key for. I wanted it because it had my name in it. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's also a visual novel and it has like a, an, a type of anime aesthetic to it as well. So, you know, what? might as well give it a go. And it was really fun. I really enjoyed that. But it was only episode one. I wonder or if was it chapter one, episode one. At least it was just the first part. So I wonder when the second one is going to come out. Probably going to do that again on, on stream then. Turn is taken. <laughs> uh, but how you doing, Ash One? One of the streams, you were one of the people that didn't notice until someone said something at the very end. But you got here late, so assumed they were all claimed. I always assume that too. Or I, sometimes I just don't even think about it. I don't really think about it. Yeah, you were actually playing- it, it was like a go ghost town. So you were playing as a... Well, kind of a ghost town. Where no one actually died? You couldn't die? And, um... I don't know. All the VODs of that playthrough is up on YouTube, though, if you want to check it out. I do recommend it. It was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and the thumbnail is one of the... <laughs> the funniest ones that I've made. <laughs> Because because of the name of the game, I just cropped out the, the main characters. Uh, well, I, I just placed my own face on there instead. <laughs> um, I guess I actually did that with the thumbnail for this uh, as well, but I don't think anyone noticed because it was just... I didn't really... Uh, it, it has a lot of characters on it, so I didn't point it out or anything. I just placed my face in there on the character we're playing as. Um... Maybe that's just something I'm gonna do with visual novels. I don't know. I didn't even think about that until just now. Maybe it's a visual novel thing. Um, <laughs> a little EP, but good. Saturday, Saturday e EPs. That's that's understandable. Um, but hey, Toonie, how you doing, Toonie? That's why you stop picking third, even though you're first or second to join the stream. I mean, that that actually makes sense, yeah, because when people see that, they probably assume that the first to second has been taken. Yeah, it's it's uh, me and my, my vape water bottle. Um. <laughs> but yeah, let us, let us just open the game, though. Uh, no dilly-dallying, uh, no, you know. Actually, you know what? I've also been been <sighs> I've been so tempted to buy the new Dragon Age game and play that. But I still have never finished Dragon Age Inquisition and I know that those two games are connected. So I I've only played it a little bit on PlayStation 4. And then I bought it on on Steam. Uh, a few months back, so I, I downloaded it earlier today. So I think I think I'm gonna be playing that off stream, <laughs> just so I can just so I can can um, be ready for um, uh, for a playthrough of, of the 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 Veil Guard as well. Ninety fifth. It's yours, Tootie. It is yours. A hey, Sparky Kitty Cat. Hello, hello. But yeah, let us open the game. And also go make sure you follow Toonie. Mr. Toonie Boons. Oh, let me pause the music. Also. Um. Wait, didn't I pause the music? No, I did. It's just really loud here. Hold on. The menu music is really loud in this game for some reason. Um There we go. Uh you heard Dragon Age speak? Mm. Oh. Don't be a quitter. Play the game again after 3 days. That's an actual achievement I just got. Why did that pop up on the other monitor though? It's like I have the game on this side, but the achievement popped up on this side. 
Uh, that was confusing. Yeah, don't be a quitter. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an achievement. This this game has some interesting achievements, though. I also got one for playing After Midnight. But have you been playing the new Dragon Age game? I really want to. But I also feel like I need to play a full playthrough of, of Dragon Age Inquisition first. Also, it's the... I know that the sound is probably more okay now, but when I open the game, let me know if it's if it needs to be bumped up a little bit. Okay, so last time, for those of you who don't know, what we're doing in this game is... Well, it's... I don't know, I don't remember all the terms. Um, but basically, we we're, we have this um, this power, and we need to find other people who has the same spirit power, I guess, um, because they will kill each other to get the the um, the power of other people. So we just need to make sure that we kill them first. But at the same time, we don't know if everyone is interested in doing that, or if they're, they're innocent. So then it's like, I have to determine whether... Is this a person that I should let stay alive, or... Do we need to kill them? But the thing is... If I decide to spare someone... They still end up dying. <laughs> I can't... I can't choose to... To, to let them live. Well, I guess it's like we have a, a curse. We have the power of a curse, is what I mean. Um, so we have this curse stone. And what we're doing is that we need to we need to gather enough souls to use this uh, curse stone to revive someone who died. Because that is what is required for the Rite of Resurrection. That's pretty much like the short version of what we need to do. Um, the story of the lore, Dragon Age lore, gets more mind-blowing with each game. And you're still playing Veilguard? Vale Wait, what do you mean you're still playing Veilguard? Vale Didn't it just came come out, though? Profession turning people into ghosts? Basically, yeah. Um... So yeah, we met this person the other other um, stream, but we we barely talked to them. And he kind of tricked us into revealing that we also have our, our cursed bearer. Oh, you're now completed. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Mm. I mean, it is a uh, that that's understandable though. I think I saw on how long to beat that it took like 86 or something hours, but then obviously the, that's if you just probably just rush through it, maybe. Okay. Is this his curse echo? So curse echoes are like... I guess the, the I don't want to go through all the the different uh, meanings of things before we get into it because I I read everything last time. Um But yeah, so curse echoes are the visual manifestation of manifestations of curses. These manifestations are fundamentally related to the origin of the curse. They do not always take the same shape and may sometimes appear in a more abstract or disfigured form. They lack consciousness, unlike a spirit, and are thus the mere dregs of a soul. Curses are made tangible by what are known as soul dregs. Someone possessed by a curse that has a curse echo is called a curse bearer. So that's basically us as well. We are someone who is possessed by a curse, and we also have a curse echo, I would assume. I haven't seen it, but... 
I guess it's the one thing that has been like floating around sometimes. But it just disappeared. Yeah, is this his curse echo? He said it was the foot washing mansion. Is that why there are only legs? I mean, it would make sense. And yeah, the game is called The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, which means that they're like stories about. Um. Different types of, um, well, I guess they're like, I don't know, legends, but not entirely, like, we don't know if it's true or not, but I mean, in this game, it's, we met someone who was looking for, well, I don't know, there's just too much to explain. <laughs> There's just too much to explain, because there's so much that I would need to read to be able to explain it properly, but... Um... But yeah, so... The Foot Washing Mansion. We can read this story, though. Um... This is the story of something that occurred in the dead of night in a residence in Mikasacho, modern-day South Warigisui Street in Kamazawa. A foul-smelling wind rattled the house. Suddenly, a giant foot, drenched in blood, smashed through the ceiling. Wash, it commanded. After the servants carefully washed the foot, it returned from whence it came, fixing the roof it had broken. A man who had been visited by the foot every night asked for a friend to trade houses with him. That night, the foot stopped appearing. So basically, there will there would be... Well... This is the, the curse echo related to that one. The large bridge here is called Yogoku Bridge. Crossing the river leads to Nihonbashi Bakurocho in Chuo City. Um, the second oldest of the many bridges spanning the Sumida River behind Senju Ohashi. During the Great Fire of Meireki in 1657, which destroyed 60-70% to 70 of Edo, many drowned in the Sumida River attempting to swim away from the flames, resulting in the building of bridges to be a major focus of the re reconstruction efforts. Although this bridge was simply known as Ohashi, or Great Bidge, Bidge, by the way, Bridge, when it was first erected, the people of Edo took to calling it Ryogoku Bridge, or Two Nations Bridge due to its location between the provinces of Musashi and Shimosa, and this eventually became its official name. Over time, the white roads at either side, originally intended as fire breaks, became popular locations for street performances and other events. The bridge was rebuilt following the Great Kanto earthquake and still stands to this day. Hmm. Yeah, so he made us reveal last time that we also ha were a curse bearer. Even though we, we, tr we try to hide it, because it's like... That puts you at risk of being killed by another curse bearer. So, I'm a little bit suspicious of this dude. A young man, probably younger than me. Maybe a college student? This guy is quite... Quite the bold character. He's got confidence, I'll give him that. A chat between two curse bearers? What is he trying to pull? Okay, let us talk to him. The tape. <laughs> Alright, let's talk. What do you want? Right, I'll cut straight to the chase. Will you join forces with me? Joined forces? To gather soul dregs? Yep, you're using your curse because there's someone you want to resurrect too, right? In that case, it'll be more effective for the two of us to work together than to do it all yourself. Think about it. We could split the work, and we'd have two kinds of curses at our disposal. 
working together. I hadn't thought about that before. Can the soul dregs in one curse stone be moved to another? That's a fundamental requirement for this to work. Well, we'll have to test it, and I can't do that alone either. I see. So should we should we work together with him or not? Because it's like I, I the thing is, you can you can you can try to say yes and risk something that you die or something. But the thing about this game is that you can also just reload and and uh, start over. So the game is very nice with that because you don't really risk a whole lot. Which is kind of a relief. <laughs> hey Dave, how you doing? Got a lurk while you're at work, but have a great stream. Thank you so much for the lurk. Guys, go make sure you follow Dave. He's, he's a good a good bean. One of the one of the bestest beans. Go go follow him. I think I'm I think I'm gonna try and see because I feel like this is just too. But at this, hmm, I'm not entirely sure though because what if what if we seem more suspicious by just agreeing to it too fast? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Now I'll try to say fine. All right then. If working together helps us both uh, get what we want, maybe it's not a bad idea. Thanks. Glad to be dealing with someone who can think things through rationally. There's something I need to know in advance. Tell me. Oh no, his eyes got scary now. How many soul dregs do you have right now? Uh, How many do I have right now? I mean, I, I guess I can't really see it right now. I guess I'll guess I guess I'll get the option when I answer him though. Unless he tries to kill me. Just to no, just to see if it transfers. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, that looks very, very sus. <laughs> right, I have... Oh no, oh, we were the one who asked him. Oh. Actually, I don't know now. <laughs> I guess I missed who said what now. <laughs> right, I have some, of course. I'm more than competent, after all. Okay, yeah, we were the one who asked him. Okay. Uh, I'm asking you how many. What if he has none? I'm at- okay, yeah. So he was basically at none. I'm at 1%, but don't worry about it. My curse is so easy to activate. I'll have plenty in no time. I bet you haven't managed to get any on your own, have you? Well, that's- <laughs> that's not entirely true. Um, I'm at 92. 92%. Huh? Say what? That's the amount of soul dregs I have in my curse stone right now. What? <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Okay, so he will be scared now. Maybe he will run off in the opposite direction. But he doesn't know that that is how we trigger our curse. When people walk away from us, turn their backs on us. That's how we end up killing them with our curse. You're not even close to being on my level. I'll keep gathering soul dregs on my own. Let's forget all this joining forces business. You gotta be kidding me. Hm. I call your bluff. Don't think you can skim me off so easily. I see. That's too bad. If you don't feel like talking, then you leave me no choice. I even gave you a chance to come out of this alive. Real shame you're just gonna waste it. Hmm. 
What are you... Okay, so this is probably gonna be like how it was last time, where we talked to the, the woman who was counting down before she would curse us. And we needed to find a, a way to save ourselves. Um, so then we had to die first to figure out how to beat her. So I think that's how it is now as well. We probably have to end up dying so that we can figure out a way to, to beat him. What the? Is this the voice of the curse echo? Among the seven mysteries, the resentful memory of the foot washing mansion is particularly strong. You can't block it out by plugging your ears. As soon as you hear the voice of my curse echo, it's the end for you. Damn it. Yeah. So that means we died. And we got an achievement for dying. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's also something that we have to do sometimes. We, we also have to die to figure out a way to beat them. So that's why it's so nice, because there's not really many... There are not really a lot of risks in this game. Because you can always reload and do it again. It's kind of the, a part of the game. My my, Ep. You seem to have arrived at a less than favor favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but... You have a way to evade curses that no one else is capable of, do you not? Fear not. You may have- uh, you may make as many attempts as you please from the conversation with Utero. Very well. Remember to ward off the curse before it is activated. But bear in mind, Shogo Uki has no way of realizing it himself, so you must react for him. Okay, so what we needed to figure out last time was just to know how it was activated. And we didn't know that when we died and came back. So we just had to guess, basically. So what made us die last time was when we had a lighter in our pocket because then she... So there, there was this inspector, or like um, a detective, I mean, who bumped into us. And he knew that we had a lighter. He must, he must have told her that we had a lighter. Because he showed up when we died. Hiding in some bushes, watching everything. Um, so... So he must have told her we had the, the lighter in our pocket, so when I got res resurrected again, I just had to think of what would activate the curse. So then I just threw the lighter away, and then she panicked um, <laughs> because uh, she, she thought it was a very random thing to do. And it was, because I just guessed. Um, so... Now we need to figure out a way to have him not activate his curse echo. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna... it's the same conversation as before. So what if I just refuse to do it right away? Maybe I'll just die uh, then as well, <laughs> because I didn't really have any choices after that. Uh, this is going nowhere. I'm just gonna see. Sorry, but there's no way I can accept your offer until I know that. Who's to say you won't run away while we're in the middle of testing it? Well, you're just going to have to trust me. Or do you think you can collect them all yourself? I'm at 92%. Huh? Say what? That's the amount of soul dregs I have in my curse stone right now. 
What? Wait, are you serious? You're not even close to being on my level. I'll keep gathering soul dregs on my own. Let's forget all this joining forces business. Okay, so right now we have the same dialogue, so I wonder if we get another option or if we just gonna have to die again. What cop last time was a snitch? It was the dude that looked like Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know, the very flashy looking one. Um Man, yeah, you gotta be kidding me. The one we met on, on that one bridge in the middle of the night. He was all alone. Hmm. I call your bluff. Don't think you can scare me off so easily. I see. That's too bad. If you don't feel like talking, then you leave me no choice. Yeah, he's just saying the same things. Um... Yeah, I don't think- I think I need to look at my inventory to s figure out what to do. Man, yeah, you can't block it out by plugging your ears. So we need to figure out a different way to do this. Do you have a way to evade curses that no one else is capable of? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna be careful about talking to him. Curse stone. Yeah, I don't really ha- I don't have any items on me right now. Surroundings. The canal where the one-sided reed grew is supposed to be around here somewhere. But now there's no trace of it left. I forgot that I could, uh, look around. Oh! A woman! Wasn't expecting that. What the? How did you... Oh, don't mind me. Yutor said he wants to talk. Uh, you'd better answer quickly before... Well, you know what. Oh, there's a woman behind him. What does she have to do with this? Are the two of them gathering soul dregs together? That could be. That could be. Yeah, when I get my hands on that that uh, detective again, you know, he he will he will hear it. Hmm. Okay, what if I talk to him and we can bring up this woman standing here? What if that is going to do something? Okay, so what if we go with fine again? Right then, if working together helps us both get what we want, maybe it's not a bad idea. Mm. 
Yeah, how many soul drinks do you have right now? <laughs> um, some, of course, some more than. Um, I like how he's just <laughs> trying to stay confident, even though he he doesn't have uh, anything to show for it. But I was just hoping that we could have like a, a way to bring up the woman in conversation here. I just don't understand. Because what are we supposed to do? I don't have anything on me. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Why don't you just keep seeing it out on my knee? But I don't have anything on me. That's the thing. I don't have anything on me. And I can't leave the area either. So it can't be something that I've been needing. Um, that I don't have. Let's see. I was hoping that the thing with the woman there would help, but... What if I just refuse to... ...work with him instead from the beginning and see what happens then? We'll kick his booty. I wish we could. <laughs> I wish we could. Um, so I'm wondering if... If it needs to to transfer to the woman or something, I don't know. Well, let's let's try the other option, and then we have tried everything that we can at the moment. Um. Or what if we can just... Hmm. Because I've clicked on everything that I can interact with, so that's not the issue.
Okay, let's just pick the, um... This is going nowhere. Part. See what happens. Sorry, but there's no way I can accept your offer until I know that. Who's to say you won't run away while we're in the middle of testing it? See, if he was running away, then that would solve everything, because that means that I would just kill him. <laughs> um, well, you're just going to have to trust me. Or do you think you can, can collect them all yourself? I wish I had the option to just refuse to say 92%. That's the amount of soul drakes I have in my curse stone right now. What? Wait, are you serious? Not even close to being on my level. I'll keep gathering soul drakes on my own. Let's forget all this joining forces business. You gotta be kidding me. I call your bluff. Don't think you can scare me off so easily. I see. That's too bad. Wait, how did he... If you don't feel like talking, then you leave me no choice. The young man encountered at Ry Ryogoku Bridge. He didn't hide the fact that he was a curse bearer. So we haven't found any new information about him either to use here. I even gave you a chance to come out of this alive. Real shame you're just gonna waste it. What if I just turned off the sound in my game? <laughs> Maybe that's what I should have done. <laughs> what are you... What the... Is this the voice of the curse echo? Among the seven mysteries, the resentful memory of the foot washing mansion is particularly strong. Can't block it out. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna try doing that and see if that is... If that is enough to... to, to f because the, the game is kind of meta in a way. So, you know, it could be the solution. But yeah, you have a way to evade curses that no one else is capable of. So I think I think I need to start thinking in a more meta way. However, as you've been here, oh, I skipped that before. As you've been here several times, allow me to expound on this fur further. If I'm not mistaken, you've already learned how to avoid hearing the voice of the curse echo somewhere. Have I? If by chance you've forgotten, perhaps try reading how to play in your files. Okay, okay. I didn't know that he, he had added more information. But hey, Shane! Uh, the game can tell what time you played on, can tell how long you haven't played. Uh, yes, and also... When I open the game... Last time, when I started playing, it picked up on the name that I'm using in on Steam, and I'm just been, I've just been calling myself Vep in the game, and then he used the full name. It's like, and then I had the option to say, no, that's not my name, and then it was just like, <laughs> well, that's creepy. <laughs> um. Wait, so you can skip... Maybe I just need to fast forward. Okay, we're gonna try the muting thing first.
Let me just try muting everything first. See if that is enough. Um. Okay, so it's gonna be quiet for a little bit. No, don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm. I just want to see if that is enough. So don't don't worry about it being quiet. <laughs> um. This is the fastest one, so I'm gonna do that. Um. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna fast forward through it because that was also an option. Um. I even gave you a chance to come out of this alive. Real shame, you're just gonna waste it. What are you... Among the seven mysteries... Da, 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 da. Uh, you can't block it out by plugging your ears. As soon as you hear the voice of my curse echo, it's the end for you. Hmm? A voice? I don't hear any voice. See, I, I'm a genius. <laughs> I don't hear any voice. What? There's no way. And yet there is. There he is, perfectly unharmed. How? What's going on here? I don't completely understand it myself, but his curse's conditions don't seem to have been met. This is my chance. Utero, your curse won't work on me. I'll let you off easy today, so get the hell out of here. You son of a... <laughs> Ugh, fine, I'll just be on my way then. But mark my words, I'll make you regret this. I'm not gonna use the curse on him though, because I feel like it's not gonna... Um... He did say that he was at 1%, so I... It's not gonna be worth it, unless it just does it on its own. It probably will. Because every time I've decided not to kill someone, I end up killing them anyway. Um... <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll make you regret this. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Turn on the audio now, because he... Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna use the mouse for this. <laughs> I used my controller. Um... Yeah. I didn't use the curse, but it still happened. Why? How is this? Yeah, I, you know, I didn't choose this. It happened anyway. The curse stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 20% soul dregs. So I have more than I need now. But the woman behind me, though. Thank God. And now I've gotten the last of the soul dregs I need. Was that just coincidence? He wasn't able to activate his curse for some reason. Things are going well. Luck must be on my side. Um, do you want to smack his smug glasses off his face? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I should check my curse stone. It should have gained a lot just now. Oh. What the? Oh, no. Uh. Story chart unlocked. What? Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to take this chance to tell you about the story chart. This is the screen which will appear when you open the story chart. From here, not only can you see the overall structure of the current story, you can also progress along different branching routes by playing past stories over again. We could call this exactly the power that Shogu Uki had sought after. 
Normally, you would have been able to use the story chart feature freely. However, due to certain circumstances, it has been locked until now. From here on, you will return to the story chart from time to time at breaks in the story. At those times, you will choose for yourself which story you wish to continue next. Okay. Use the story chart button button on the menu to quit playing a chapter and return to the story chart. If you quit midway through a chapter that you haven't finished, you will have to restart again from the beginning. Completed chapters can be resumed from various points in the chapter. The game will not return to previous game state when resumed. If you return to the story chart by using the suspend command that appears at certain points, it is the same as quitting and returning to the story chart. There are two phases that must be completed to fully complete a chapter. If a chapter is finished while there are still tasks to be done, the chapter will not dim and will remain lit up. Hmm. Okay. By the way, should you use the story chart to replay a past event? Do you know what you must do and where? Of course you do. After all, you have gotten this far. What trigger did Yoko Fukunaga set off that led her led to her dying the way she did? You come this far several times, so I have every confidence you will be all right. As long as you make sure not to do that thing. However, like with the lighter and voice earlier, Shoga Uki has no way of knowing that himself. Ah, on that note, I'm curious. Have you determined how many people Shogo Uki has killed with his curse? Um... Well... If we're talking about the ones that I deliberately chose... So that was the first guy that showed up at the, um, in the park. And then we had the second guy who was in the dark, in the dark room. And then we had a girl. Like a high school girl, I think. I don't think that I deliberately killed anyone else. I think there are only three people. Huh, I see, I see. So that is your understanding of things. As it turns out, the correct answer is... A three. told you. Aha, that is correct. I'm pleased to see you have such a solid grasp of events. I think you will be just fine. <gasps> Answer the storyteller's question correctly. <gasps> Who done it? Who done it? <laughs> uh, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Please continue the story at your leisure from the story chart screen. We'll do it. We'll do that. Okay, so th these are all grayed out. So we... We only have this part. Summary of previous events, for those of you who have missed it. Uh, Shogo Uki is with Yoko Fukunaga at Kinshibori Park, searching for one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo. His interest in the occult starts to grow as he learns more about it from Yoko. Yeah, so she was the one who was after, um, the right of resurrection first. But then, we kind of just ended up helping her, um...
I'm gonna try resume first. See what happens. How is the right related to the mysteries? Hmm. Also, we're getting an ad. Um, I'm not gonna do anything before the, the ad is over. But thank you, Tuni. Mm. Also, let me have a look at the, the achievements in the meantime. Who done it? <laughs> um Yeah, played the game in the middle of the night. That happened last time. Wait, complete the prologue? I'm not gonna scroll down, I don't wanna get spoiled, but... We haven't even finished the prologue? <laughs> Damn, okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Um... Interesting. Well, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna... Not gonna look at the other ones. I don't wanna, I don't wanna end up getting spoiled. I don't... Uh, but the name of the achievements, of the prologue achievements, was the Rite of Resurrection. Does that mean that we will... This is just, I'm just asking, uh, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. I'm wondering if it just means that we need to actually do the right, a resurrection, and then we will get the um, prologue done. <laughs> Maybe it's just a really long prologue, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that was, that was, that was... A little bit unexpected. That makes me wonder, how long is this game? Like, actually. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um... Hold on, I'm just checking my, my, my phone real quick. Yeah, that, that that was unexpected, but well, well, I I am enjoying it though. So it's like I'm not I'm not complaining. I was just taken aback a little bit, <laughs> just just a little bit. <laughs> uh... But hey, Craig, how you doing? How are you doing? Paranormicite, the endless prologue, yeah, apparently. Well, I hope you're doing well. And we're back from the ads as well. Uh, well, at least it says that on my end, but I guess the... There we go, there we go, okay. Wait, hang on, I got another question. Hmm? You mentioned the Rite of Resurrection. Are you looking for that too? Does it have something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? Oh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth. It's actually the other way around. What do you mean? Hmm, well... I started off searching for the right of resurrection. But along the way, I realized that I needed to investigate the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo first. I see, so then... Why are you looking for the right? If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead, does that mean you got someone you want to bring back? Yeah, so she mentioned that she wanted to bring back her dog. 
Um, you know what? Forget it. I just it just came to mind, so I thought I'd ask. I didn't mean to pry. Sorry. No, it's fine. I figured I'd need to tell you at some point. It's Ogopogo. <laughs> that's that's the name of her dog. Uh, he's he's a she Shiba Inu. Yeah, I want to bring Ogopogo back to life. He died in an accident about a month ago. Ogopogo died, or died. <laughs> I forget to I forgot to do the dramatic pause. It's just I've I've read this before, so I just I don't want to spend too much time doing the all the same reading again. Alright, Ogopogo was my dog. I had him for eight years. Ah, okay. Your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have been really hard for you. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs. But as soon as I found out about it, I knew I had to give it a try. I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Mm, but you know what? All that led me to meeting you. So at least something good came out of it. Though that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Coco. I'll do everything I can to help you. Yay! I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? But yeah, what's that got to do with the seven mysteries? So, about the connection between this rite and the Seven Mysteries. Putting together everything we've talked about. My guess is that the original stories behind the Seven Mysteries, the true stories, are the key to finding the rite of resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow, 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. Wait, since when was, was I your assistant? Anyway, this is all just hearsay, but... Some say that what led to the Seven Mysteries coming to be was the Rite of Resurrection itself. Huh? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought the Rite of Resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right, it seemed that way uh, that an Onmyoji from the Edo period rediscovered the ancient art. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the Rite apparently was written in the Edo period. Oh right, I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. Wow, what a name. And it speculates that the secret of the rite is hidden within the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So now the Seven Mysteries are the hot new trend. Okay, let us go and take a look at the... Um... The Record of Fates. An old manuscript from the Edo period written by the sorcerer who recovered the Rite of Resurrection. It is viewed as a priceless and authentic document due to its detailed account on how to perform the ritual. Hmm. Among who? You know, this whole thing's starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on, remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? It starts with, with belief, right? Um... Okay. Whoa. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. Oh no, did she just... Something's got Yoko really rattled. Okay, so... This is... We need to try to prevent her from dying, if we can. I don't know if we can, though, because she was the one we were supposed to use the Rite of Resurrection on, because she ended up getting cursed. We didn't have any use uh, for the Rite of Resurrection before we met her. Um, so she's the only reason why we're collecting all the the soul dregs and stuff to use for the, the, the Rite. But hey, Robin, how you doing? Also, thank you for the water. I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. <gasps> Robin! Happy November! Happy, happy, joy, joy! Yay! <laughs> happy 13 months! How you doing? Out of hair in my hand. 
How you doing? Thank you so much. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Do you have any plants this weekend? Actually, do any of you have any any interesting plants? Some great news. Ooh, what is what is the what are the great news? Yeah, I can't move. Is there something behind me? Yoko, are you okay? Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, this this can't be. No. No. Okay, I don't wanna I don't wanna turn around. Why? It's no use. She's in no condition to talk. Keep yelling her name. Okay, so we did not have this option before. Or maybe we did, but I just didn't try talking her to her like three times. Oh, you have so Oh, that's cool. Congrats, Robin. That is really good. I'm glad to hear that. That is some good news. A good news. I'm happy for you. I hope it go. Uh, I hope it goes. <laughs> I hope it works. I hope it goes well. Crossing everything we can for you. Mm -mm. Bestest bean. Everyone here is the bestest bean. That is true. It is true. Yeah, keep yelling her name. Huh? What? Is calling her name really going to help? I'm already yelling as hard as I can. Shouldn't I look for what's causing this? There's nothing there. Yoko, hang in there, Yoko. Look at me. You're going to be okay. It's alright. There's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there. Oh no. Okay, so that was apparently what we were supposed to do. So she's not dead anymore. I wish you knew of the possibility earlier as I dealt with this since 2016. Hey, but better late than never though. I'm very glad that you got the opportunity for this then. More updates later as you get them. Sounds good. That sounds good. Okay, so these have diverged now. So this will be interesting. This will be interesting. <gasps> Clever! Hello! Hello! <laughs> welcome in! Welcome in! Hey, we also get a cat coming over. Hey, thank you so much for the raid, Clever. How was your stream? I saw you were playing some 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 um uh Animal Crossing. How did it go? How did it go? <laughs> I'm I'm under my my blanket. I'm under my blanket. She's probably going to try to be on my lap now. <laughs> um but it was good. You did mostly, mostly dozies. What? What is? What is that? <laughs> what is that? But yeah, go make sure you follow Clever if you're not already. Go do it. Go do it. But hey, DBL, welcome in. Welcome in. You never get to raid me because you usually Sundays. That's true. That is true. Yeah, you usually don't stream on Saturdays. Was there? Uh, any anything like any particular mood you were in to stream uh, for, for stream today i don't know we're, that was a very weird sentence i hope you knew what i meant <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah we, we having a two step also for those of you who if anyone is new here uh my name is repricos uh you can call me vep vepri 
Uh, I have two cats. <laughs> One of them is here. Um, we're currently playing a game called um, Paranormasite. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, which is a spoopy... I, I wouldn't say that it's scary, but it's it's more like a mystery uh, visual novel. But it's uh, it's very interesting. Kind of meta, too, so that's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Oh, mostly cozies. Okay, I didn't see your correction. <laughs> Cat attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on. Um, Animal Crossing in the night in the woods. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So you switched games. I didn't. I didn't see that. Um, you have a few odd Sunday events this month, so you're doing Saturdays instead. Mm. Well, that that sounds uh, like a good idea. Um, which mystery am I on? Uh, right now we. Are just retracing our steps to kind of rewrite the 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 past in a way so we haven't done this yet we just got into what is called like um uh, what was it called again a uh, story chart so we just uh, unlocked this ability so we can go back to certain events that we've done to see if we can undo some things. So we just saved the person that uh, was the first to die. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens then. And that was before we started getting into any of the, the mysteries, except the, I guess the, the Whispering Canal is the one that we are at, in a way. But yeah, obviously, if you if you need to to raid and run or just you know do some other things and and chill, clever, no worries. But I also you you more than welcome to hang out if you want to. We're just doing some chill reading. Kinshibori Park Part Three, Shogo Oki. So this is the the us person. We are playing as Shogo Oki, or we're like kind of controlling him it's like it's a meta game so it's like we are the player but it's like we are controlling his actions so it's not like he is us but he's just a person that we are controlling if that makes sense <laughs> um but it's not like we're supposed to be him in in a in a way it's kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit this game um, Shoko cries Yoko's name in a desperate attempt to wake her as she lies, unmoving on the ground. Will this please get through to her? We'll see, we'll see. You lurk soon, gotta put away laundry. Do do the things you need to do. Do them. Hmm. I said it first. I said hmm first. <laughs> Huh? Oh, good. You're awake. What? I... Um... Are you okay? You were so rattled and confused. I thought you'd really lost it. Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? Wait, what did you say? I think I've heard that before. You're the one who said it earlier. Oh, right. That might have been it. My humors were off balance. <laughs> Wait, back there? You ended up like that because of your humors? Yeah, I've heard that at this age, your humors being even a little bit off can be fatal. <laughs> I'm glad you're back to normal now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you so much trouble. But I really don't remember what happened. Well, that's just as good, to be honest. It sounds like what happened to me. Maybe this place is dangerous somehow? What? You're backing out? 
Yeah, it just doesn't feel safe to me, and I'm worried about you. Let's call off today's investigation. Come on, I just started feeling back to normal too. Nope, not happening. Go home. I'll even pay your cab fare, okay? Mm -hmm. I ended up having to force a still protesting Yoko into a taxi. Even then, she still wouldn't stop complaining. So to placate her, I promised I'd search the park on my own for a little while longer. Uh, well, we're still gonna end up getting um, cursed then, I assume. Maybe. Or maybe not. Yeah, so, so our story has turned a different... In a different direction now. Inchibori Park, Part 4. Shoga Uki. Summary of previous events. Worried about Yoko after her bizarre incident, Shogo decides to call off their investigation into the mysteries for the night. Despite her stubborn objections, she managed to persuade her that he manages to persuade her by offering to continue to search on his own. 5 a.m. In further news. Oh. Oh, well, I guess we died now. Uh, before dawn today, a police officer on patrol discovered. Oh, wait, I, I missed it. The man was taken to the hospital, but his death was confirmed shortly after. Investigations are still underway, but police suspect a connection to the other unexplained deaths found in the area at around the same time. Is this when we finish the prologue? <laughs> I guess so, because we're getting, uh... <laughs> I, I guess? It was a very long prologue, I have to say, but... I streamed this last Saturday as well, just saying. And we're getting the credits now. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, complete the prologue. See that? Imagine that. Well done in your efforts thus far. This brings Shogo Oki's story to a close. Okay, so we're not going to be playing as Shogo Oki anymore. Ah, but this is not the end. Far from it. In fact, this is where the story finally begins. The routes of the three protagonists have now been unlocked. Okay, so there are three in total. Haru Shigima, a woman who lost her son when he was kidnapped and murdered. Yeah, so we talked to her last time. And this one as well. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, the chief inspector of the first investigative division, who's looking into the death of an officer in the line of duty. Yako Sakazaki, a high school girl who wants to bring her friend back from the dead. A girl who died in a suspicious suicide. Yeah, so we met all of these three as Shoga Uki. Yeah, the music is really loud for me. <laughs> so we we um we met all of these three. We ended up killing two of them. The two women, or the girl and the woman, and then the the man. He uh, he was a police officer or an investigator. So we just left um, because he was with another person. So it would have been too suspicious to, to kill him, I guess. So I guess now we're supposed to uh, 
I don't know what we're supposed to do now. That's actually kind of interesting. Um, each of them is burdened with circumstances that leave them no choice but to seek the right of resurrection. Following these three storylines will re reveal the full nature of all that is occurring. With that, please enjoy the continuation of this tale. Okay. See now. Do you see the, the image here? Of this dude? That is the... Um, the detective. That must have told her last time about the lighter we had in our pocket and that was how she uh, could uh, trigger her curse and kill us so i actually kind of want to start with her because that seems the most intriguing to me at the moment because i know the most about her anyway about her story so far but that is a crazy long prologue. It was really long, yeah. <laughs> like, how long do I have in this game in total? Well, this is just today. I, I, I miss when they had the total playtime showing up here before. They don't do that anymore. I don't know why. Uh, well, it shows five and a half hours, but I don't know if that is counting the time that we played today, or if it's just from last time. Okay. Not dreams. Haru Shigima. When the son of Haru Shigima was kidnapped, a botched investigation by, off the, by the police resulted in the child's murder. One year later, Haru was hired has hired a private investigator to help solve the unsettled case. Late at night, while speaking to the detective at her home, something strange suddenly appears. Hmm. It's interesting. May those who mock fires put a perish in flame. <laughs> Kill them. Kill them. The flame bearers. Oh. So that's why her curse was to kill anyone who used fire or could use fire because that was probably the reason for her son's death. Something related to a fire. Kill them all. You have acquired the power of the curse stone, the haunting clappers. You can use it to, s to kill those with fire or a fire starting device on their person. Press the use curse button to set your target alight. Okay, so this is one of the, the seven mysteries uh, of Hanjo. And the curses comes from each of the seven mysteries. Uh, so the one we had last time as Shogoki was the Whispering Canal. Mm, an enduring superstition. As the evening bell rings in Riecho near present-day Shumoko Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fires, all the while striking his wooden clappers. Tonight, the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers together again. Clack, clack. The echo answers again, but no matter how hard he searches for the source of the second pair of clappers, he never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous tanuki or kitsune, while others say it was a warning from the spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. A cursed power kills by burning one who is in possession of fire or a fire starting device. A resentful memory Red, red, red. Everything is dyed crimson. My home is burning to the ground. It's hot. So, so hot. I must call for help, but I cannot speak. My throat must be burned up from the smoke. 
Oh, I think I'm already on fire. That's right. I'll just use the clappers. Clack, clack. Is anybody there? Clack, clack. Why is no one coming? I'm going to burn to death. How did it come to this? All right. Her. It must be the work of that vixen who appeared suddenly and enchanted my lord. That witch. Those hauntingly cold eyes had my lord dancing in the palm of her hand. Perhaps I was also taken in by her. How many innocent people did I lure in under orders? This is, must be karma. The sound of a heavy bell. It feels like... It feels like my head... May head. <laughs> it feels like my head will split open. All right. The evening bell. That must be why nobody can hear the sound of my clappers. I gotta do it louder. Clack, clack. I wonder if this is... Uh, from a different story, or if it's related to the character we're going to play as now. I'm not entirely sure. Haunting clappers, spooky cheeks, must be a thick ghost. That's not in- Do you call butts clappers? I've never heard that before. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You, who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. Hmm. Haru Shigima, 12 a.m. Shigima Mansion Reception Room. Back with me, ma'am? Yeah, Richter is the, the, the detective. Can't say I understand what just happened. But it certainly seems to have put you in a good mood. The, it was the murder, murderous intent that put us in a good mood, I guess. This might be the first time I've ever seen you really smile. Sweet dreams? <laughs> uh, yeah, she doesn't look quite well. Uh... uh... Haru is a housewife who resides in a manor near Shim Shumoku Bridge. Uh, her 11-year-old son, Shuichi, was kidnapped and murdered about a year ago. The death was the result of a mistake on the part of the de detective assigned to the case. A mistake which enraged the kidnapper and had him cut off all contact with the police, leaving no room for negotiation. The incident was covered up and Shuichi's killer remains at large, leading the aggrieved Haru to call on the services of private investigator Richter Kai who uncovered the truth to uncover the truth. The Shigima family came from a line of samurai who built their residence in Hanjo during the Edo period. They assumed important positions in the police force following the Meiji Revolution, thereby protecting their family's elevated status. Even today, many in the Shigima line work as police bureaucrats and senior police officers. Haru's father sits in the upper echelons. Uh, how do you say that word again? I know it, but it's like every time I heard this, I hear this word, I forget uh, how to say it. <laughs> uh, of the National Police Agency, and her husband, adopted into the Shigima clan through an arranged marriage, is also a highly respected agency official. However, as her family prioritizes work above all else, it wasn't long before Haru's marriage grew cold. Uh, though she wants for nothing, she is isolated from her neighbors and withdrawn from society. Seeing her son grow into a young man gave Haru a purpose in life, but it was cut short by the kidnapping incident. Following the incident, Haru spent many days in a deep depression, 
breaking into sudden fits of shouting and wandering around in the middle of the night. Her cheerful, loving disposition faded away, and she took to making snide remarks at her husband, which only further soured their relationship. A few months ago, Haru's husband was transferred to another area for work and now rarely returns home, with Haru left to live in the large, empty mansion alone. As a housekeeper who has been with the family for a long time comes in to take care of all the housework, Haru has nothing but time on her hands. Esh echelon? That's see, I think that's why I just refuse to re learn how it's pronounced, because I think it's stupid. Because that makes no sense. It's like, English sometimes is so stupid. <laughs> because like, if you compare that to any other word who has the same combination of letters, they would not sound like that at all. Like, that is not a logical assumption to pronounce the word that way. And I think I just you refuse to actually accept that it is pronounced that way. Yeah, but that word in particular? Really stupid. Like, there is no S there. How the fuck do you get the, the S in there? No. Not dreams. Sounds like something I might want to hear about. Hmm. My heart's still racing. This is it. My chance. At long last. A private investigator, investigator I hired. A friend told me about him. They said he's not very well known, but he's good at what he does. When I first visited his office in Oda City and saw how he dressed, I could hardly believe he was a detective. But after talking to him for a while, I changed my mind. He says some strange things at times, but he seems like the reliable sort. The eccentric man that Shogu Uki ran into at Ho Hoanji Bridge. Richter is actually a private investigator with an office in Oda City, Tokyo. After taking on a request from Haru Shig Shigima to investigate the unsold, unsold kidnapping and murder of her son, he gets caught up in the events surrounding the Rite of Resurrection. Once a police officer, Richter was racked with guilt over the police's inability to help all those in need, and quit the force to start his own private investigation firm. However, his soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases and has put his office in dire financial straits. How he is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that a wealthy patron is keeping him afloat. Richter suddenly uh, studied alongside Detective Jun Aereo at the police academy. This is, uh... So, with the other police dude that we, uh... It's gonna be, like, the, the second main character that we follow. This is, like, his partner, I think. Because they were together at the, the cemetery. Um... Last stream. Somewhat surprisingly, given his outlandish clothing and mannerisms, Richter excels at co uh, covert investigations and tailing his targets. He proudly refers to himself as an investigator extraordinaire, though that only ever succeeds at impressing himself. <laughs> Richter's biggest source of happiness is nuzzling his pet female albino parakeet, Ernestine. Uh, Ernestine. Ernestine or Ernestine? <laughs> I don't know, which he keeps in his office. He also enjoys collecting Mockingbird stickers, a popular line of merchandise featuring birds inexplicably dressed like delinquents and can be frequently sighted searching around town for them. <laughs> That's funny. While out and about, Richter typically leaves the office and more importantly, Ernestine in the care of Amamori, a junior high schooler, who volunteered to assist Richter after being involved in a previous case. Hmm. It's 
So he's a bird person. Wait, another one? Asher Heron Agency. Richter Kai's private investigation firm in Kamada, Oda City. Originally, Kai thought he gave it a simple name like Kai's Detective Agency. But upon hearing that people are more likely to pick names listed at the front of the phone of the phone book alphabetically, he decided to pick a name starting with an A. Thus, the Asher Heron Agency was established. However, it is questionable whether the heron, a bird of somewhat ominous significance, is an effective symbol for attracting customers. Even his own assistant has referred to the name as confusing at best. After all, rather than an Asher Heron, Richter keeps a white parrot as a pet and dresses not in blue, but mostly in white. If there was a symbolic connection to be made here, it was surely it has surely been lost on all but Richter himself. A private investigator, also known as a private eye, is a detective who operates their own agency. Although there are no formal qualifications necessary to become a private investigator, many are retired police agents or detectives due to the similarities between the work involved. At a glance, private investigators for private investigation firms and inquiry offices offices might look similar, but they carry out different types of vis investigations. Um, inquiry offices specialize, specialize in conducting credit checks on businesses, while private investigators are generally involved in tailing persons of interest and gaining information surreptitiously. Mm. I don't know how do we explain odd odor, uh, but it, it's it's um it's French though, <laughs> so it's not English. You know they have different grammar rules. So that's just because it's a uh, it's not even English. <laughs> but height and sight rhyme, but not height and weight. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. fax machine. You can send images to other places along the telephone network. Oh yeah, so I forgot to mention this, but this is supposed to be during the 70s. It's not really mentioned too much, except right at the beginning. I don't really know how it works. Most houses don't have one. I rarely find a use for it. An old hanging scroll. I don't know who painted it. It's been hanging here since before I was born. An arrangement of flowers. We bring in someone to do it. I don't even know what the flowers are called. A stereo unit with separated speakers designed for home use. My husband insisted on buying one, even though he isn't one to listen to music often. Maybe he just wanted a status symbol, I guess. Well, I'll be damned. Is that what I think it is? Goodness, you made me jump. It's just a silly little sticker my son got from somewhere or other. He put it up just before. Well, you know what happened. I still can't bring myself to take it down. Is that one of the Mockingbird stickers that he collects? <laughs> Let me take a closer look. I knew it. It's Head Henshow from way back in, in set number one. This is a real collector's item. It's a chicon. Yeah, 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 because it's, he said that <laughs> the stickers are like, um, uh, mockingbirds, but they're like dressed as delinquents. And I can see, I can totally see that. <laughs> uh, as someone who's watched a lot of animes where, where like, it's about delinquents and stuff. This is this is <laughs> this is really hilarious. <laughs> um, excuse me. Don't tell me you never heard of the mockingbirds. The what? They're the hottest new craze. Cute little birds dressed up like rough and tumble delinquents. I never heard of them, but this certainly seems to matter to you. The best part is nobody knows who made them. They just started showing up around town. And soon enough, they'd won everybody's hearts. 
The story goes that they've ma uh, they're made by some anonymous artist who covertly leaves them behind in specific locations. No one knows when or where they'll show up next. Uh, they're basically an urban legend of sorts. Is this going to be like a type of collectible that I, I can collect in the game, maybe? To think one would turn up here all of all places. This is a good sign, I'm sure of it. Oh well. Uh, oh. Well, that's nice. <gasps> Collect your first Mockingbird sticker. Uh, yeah, uh, that. I guess I was right. <laughs> Mockingbird number one discovered. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love me some uh, some uh, collectibles. Um, uh, it can also be a pain in the ass, but hopefully it won't be. Uh, but English says rules are meant to be broken. Clearly, yeah. These popular bird mascot stickers seem to pop up everywhere. Nobody knows who the legendary artist is behind these quirky birds. They quickly became popular for their surreal yet oddly cute designs. Be in the right place at the right time in Hanjo, and you might just be able to find all 20 of them scattered around. Legend has it collecting them all will be uh, will bring good luck. Okay, so it gives you hints on where they will appear. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to read all of that now. <laughs> okay, see, so she just says the same thing. Oh! Never mind. Television! A color television. My father bought one as soon as I, it hit the market. He likes to have the latest gadgets. Unlike the latest models, there is no remote control. We've had it for a long time. Back when it, when it was new, we all gathered around it and marveled at it as a family. But with father and my husband being away so often, it quickly fell into d uh, disuse. Hmm. It's a clock. This reminds you that there's one strawberry you can't find in Celeste. Like a regular strawberry? You could look up guides, though. The swinging of the pendulum echoes through the room. And it also tells you where on, uh, like, so you know which chapter in what, on what level, no. What part of the level it, it is in, because it will tell you, but you just don't know where it is. Because then, then you can narrow it down and find it easily on on the in a guide or something. It feels livelier than usual with Richter here. Usually, it's just me. Okay, we've interacted with everything except uh, him. Let me bring you up to speed. We were in the middle of a chat when you suddenly started spacing out. And the whole time you were grinning to yourself like you just won the lottery. Care to tell me what that was all about? Well, where to start? Mm, interesting. Very interesting. So, the haunting clapper's curse echo appeared out of nowhere. Told you how to perform the right of resurrection and gave you the curse you'll need to do it. Have I got that right? That's right. So it's all real. Honestly, I still find it hard to believe. But I guess I have to know. I saw that curse stone appear in your hand myself. It looked like it popped clean out of thin air. With evidence that clear, there's no denying that there's some supernatural force at work. Hmm. You know the exact area, but you can't find it for the life of you. You feel like you dashed into every surface in that chapter. I found all the, the strawberries in... Well, if we're talking about the regular ones, I found all of them. 
uh, and I just looked up, up at a, a guide when I tried finding them, the ones that I couldn't find. I don't think you quite understand. Oh? This isn't about evidence, and it isn't about belief. It's more than uh, it's more than that. I know it's real. The moment the curse appeared, I knew everything before it even said a word. It was already there in my head, as clear as day. You just knew, huh? It was etched onto my soul along with the curse echoes resentful memories. So I can feel it. What it was like. Dying like they did hundreds of years ago. Dying like they did hundreds of years ago. Wreathed in flame, writhing in pain as my, ba uh, my flesh blackens and my blood boils. I can feel it. All the agony. All the rage. It fills me with bloodlust. I think I need to kill someone. Anyone will do, just as long as they're carrying fire. I see. That could be a problem. You think so? From what I know of you, I was sure you'd see it as an opportunity. The stronger the desire to resurrect someone, the stronger the urge to kill. That's how it seems to me, anyway. Good grief. Talk about a spanner in the works. I say we take the stock for a moment. Remind ourselves where we've come from and where we're going. That might be a good idea. I was missing some music. <laughs> uh, but you're only missing that and one crystal heart. Then you'll have done everything other than core B-side and farewell. But you can get it then. You can find it. I believe in you. I believe in you. But hey, swag. Thank you for the lurk. Okay, she didn't have anything new to say. Oh, chandelier, the lights. The chandelier is the only thing in here that's my choice. It's my favorite part of the room. I don't think there's anything new to interact with except just continuing talking to them. About the investigation. That's what you hired me for, ma'am. To look into your son's kidnapping last year. To uncover the truth behind the abduction and murder of Shuichi Shigima. Oh, yes. I remember. You never did find the one who did it. That's what I'm here about today, in fact. Kind of you to let me know- uh, let, me, let me draw by so late, by the way. I've been turning over every last stone, and I've come up with a grand total of one lead. So you said. As far as the police are concerned, it's a cold case, but I managed to make some headway. I remember. You were just about to tell me. The Shigima kidnapping overview. A kidnapping and murder case that took place in Hanjo, Sumida, around one year ago. Haru Shigima's son, Shuichi, age 11, was kidnapped on his way home from school, with a ransom being demanded that same evening. Initially, the kidnapping was thought of as a simple extortion scheme, but when it came to light that the Shigima family was closely tied to the police, and Shuichi, Shuichi was in fact the grandson of a senior officer, uh, of, senior official <laughs> it was quickly assumed that the perpetrator was acting upon a grudge against the police force 
The kidnapping was treated as a direct attack against the good name of the police, and a large-scale investigation was launched that used the best equipment available to trace phone calls. This made it all the more embarrassing when they were unable to catch the culprit, losing the public's uh, confidence. The culprit grew cocky, relentlessly mocking the police force. After three days of failure after failure, Haru reached a breaking point. Spurred by concern for her son, she resolved to hand over the ransom money as fast as possible. But her husband and father, who held the prestige of the police in high regard, refused saying that they would not let the criminal win by giving in to the, their demands. Uh, the increasingly frantic detective assigned to the case lost his temper when the criminal called to give an ultimatum, causing the culprit to never make contact again. Another week passed and Shuichi's body was found floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi's death could be largely ascribed to the police's incompetence, but this was ultimately covered up with stringent media embargoes. Uh, the investigation was never closed, but the case has long gone cold. That is very upsetting. No wonder she is so angry as well. She lost her son over the, their like pride. Because her husband and her father were too proud. The only son of Haru Shigima, he was kidnapped and murdered one year ago. His body was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Shuichi was a consensuous, uh, con consensuous, conscientious. Conscientious, that's the word. <laughs> Brave young boy who was determined to protect his mother, Haru, amid his father's frequent absences. He dreamed of becoming a police officer and displayed diligence and an impressive sense of responsibility from a young age, likely due to being raised in an extremely strict environment. Born in the early 70s, he spent his days immersed in various activities and studies, including playing piano, learning the abacus, abacus, uh, taking English lessons and training in Kendo. Shuichi's tendency to put other people's needs over his own meant he died without ever telling his classmates how much he longed for them all to go out on a hunt for mockingbird stickers. Mm. Okay, she's not saying any new, uh, thinking thing, anything new. Rotary phone, I forgot to... Check that one. A telephone. This mansion has a private line. But also we're getting an ad very soon. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a short break. And I'll also need to let Tusta out because she's starting to nag like crazy now. Um, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'll see you in a bit.
We're back. We're back. Here we go. One to start went out and one to use came in. <laughs> Oh, he was about to jump up and then he just <laughs> got distracted <laughs> and left. Uh, it was like he, he just, you know, he he was he was getting ready to jump and then it's like, oh, what was that? And then he just left. <laughs> uh, hey Ryan! How you doing? I don't know if uh, if you've been here since the beginning or not, Orion, but um, we basically just ended the the prologue. <laughs> uh, you have not, okay? Yeah. So apparently, what we've done so far has mainly just been the prologue <laughs> of the game. Um, yeah, I think that was it, Craig. Um, Hope you had a nice little break. It was, it was, it was okay. It was, it was pre pretty okay. Thank you. <laughs> you tired and exhausted? I hope you get some, some chill, chill um, time to, to yourself. Um. Okay, let's ask about the kidnapping first. So now we're playing as her. You watched the world's finals today, and that was very hype and cool, though. Legion, Legion, yeah, I assumed that that was what you meant. That's the only thing I know that you you watch. I mean, you could be watching other things, but that's the only thing I know about. I suppose there's not much point going over the kidnapping itself. No, I'm very familiar. And I'll leave that for the files to cover and just confirm a few things about the case. The police trace the culprit's calls back to... Let's see here. Northern Oyoko River, here in Sumida City. That's quite a wide area. Oh, that's too stuck on the window. It's wild because she gets so aggressive uh, making that sound on the window to make sure that I hear her. And then she just d just stands there, not jumping in after I open the window. <laughs> um, do you play as them both now? No, so you, you play, I guess, playing as that character that we did last time, that was just the um, prologue. And then there are three other characters that are like the main characters that you play as so she is one of them one of the two uh police officers is one of them and then the young uh high school girl that we ended up killing she is also the third so we just started on and uh, this one you missed what happened at the bridge then yeah it was a tricky thing uh, a sneaky little thing like last time the cliffhanger is still hanging for you. <laughs> uh, so you're very anxious. No, it's so good. It's so good. Hey, if you 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 can you can watch it later though if you want to. I feel like you haven't missed too much. I mean, I've been live for two hours, but I feel like you haven't missed too much of the gameplay. But also, you don't have to. I'm just saying, if you want to. <laughs> uh. Northern Oyoko River, here in Sumida City. That's quite a wide area. That's right. In the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. So we know why this dude... Why, why he was with her... When we were talking to her. 
as the other guy. And it's because she hired this one, this detective, to help figure out what happened to her son. Um... And he also knows about the, the curse bear uh, thing as well. So he knows what curse she has. Or how it's activated. And how it's activated is that anyone who carries fire or any fire um, activating device, like a, a lighter, like last time, that we had on us, that we threw away, that's how she can activate her power. And mostly it was technically just the prologue. <laughs> um, even if it feels... Yeah, 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 it is. It is important. It is important. All of it is important, I think. So did her son die in a fire? I don't know yet. We don't actually know. We just know that they found her son uh, floating in a river. But he was kidnapped. And the reason why he died was because... Uh, her father and her husband both work as police officers. And the kidnapper was asking for ransom money. And apparently as police officers, they were too proud to give in to the demands. And then suddenly the... Um, the kidnapper stopped contacting them, and they found the the son dead the next day. So they're trying to figure out who was the kidnapper now, and I guess how it also happened. That is so shitty. Yeah, I know. So yeah, we're trying to figure out who the kidnapper is now. No, I, I said the same thing, that that's so shitty that he... I would have been so upset if if I had a, a kid and he would die because... Two of my family members just were too proud to give them money, to give them back. <laughs> uh, in the end, they never managed to nail down exactly where the calls were coming from. But it was almost certainly the same location that Shuichi was being held captive. Shuichi is the son. Um, since Shuichi's voice could be heard during the killer's calls, Northern Oyoko, Oyoko River is quite a distance from Shuichi's normal school commute. Factoring in that he was seen at that he was seen at school, but went missing before he arrived at his house, it is likely that he was abducted by car on his route home. Maybe, but... Exactly. Shuichi was a clever boy. He never would have gotten into a car with a stranger. That's right. I was very firm about that. I know he understood, too. I even saw him warning the other children. It's possible that they forced him into the car. The only issue there is... Uh, the only issue there is... There weren't any witnesses to the kidnapping. You can't bundle, bundle someone into a car with that many students around and not be noticed. But nobody came forward to say they saw anything suspicious. So did they target him at some other time? Or somewhere away from his, uh, from his usual route? But if those... Uh, both, both of those seem a little far-fetched. Which raises the question, how did the kidnapper pull it off? The police never managed to find an answer. In the end, they decided that the kidnapper might just have gotten lucky. Well, why not turn the problem on his head? Hmm. She's still thinking the same thing. Um, did you manage to save or resurrect the person from the start then? Did you get enough stuff? Uh, I... Yeah, we have gotten a new mechanic in the game now that we can go back in time and change the story. So what we did was we forced her to leave. 
uh, in exchange for promising to to look for the um, the mystery ourselves before her, but then that resulted in us dying instead. So we were the one who ended up being cursed on the playground where she died uh, in the beginning. So we kind of just switched places instead. But that was also revealed at the beginning, before we even started playing on the TV screen, that they showed the news of him dying. So they were kind of telling you already that he would die. Um, so yeah, that's when we got the uh, end of the prologue. So it was just to like... Yeah. About the right of resurrection. But yeah, he knows about all of this now. The right of resurrection, huh? I read about that in an occult magazine the other day. Apparently some old book showed up recently with all the gory details. And they say that the right can be found somewhere in Honjo. I remember the first time you told me about that. It felt like... Like my prayers had been heard. Like I had hope, real hope, for the first time. Ever since that awful day, I've wondered. What if I hadn't sent him to school? What if I'd just paid the ransom? Not a day goes by when I don't think that if I'd done something differently, Shuichi would still be alive. You can't blame yourself, ma'am. It was the culprit's fault, not yours. Though I know that it won't help any. Though I know that won't help any. <laughs> Grief is funny like that. I, I say that as a laugh, but it was just because I put emphasis on the wrong words. But um, So it was like, kind of showing how the mechanics and stuff worked. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Because in the end, those two characters weren't, like, that important in the overall story, I guess. We also didn't have a proper, like, motive to use the Rite of Resurrection. So I, I understand why that character was selected to be the one you played as in the prologue. And it also explained why, um, even when I chose not to use my curse on the other people, that they still ended up dying. That mattered. That had some some meaning because the the narrator, the storyteller, he asked us later, how many people. Did we actually curse? And then I had to think... Or how many people did we actually kill? And then I accounted. Well, technically, I only chose to kill three people. Even though all of them died. But I didn't make the choice with the other people. So it wasn't me who did it. And I answered correctly. It was only three people. I don't know. We don't know. I mean, I guess maybe there was something else. Or maybe it doesn't really matter. It was just to, like, test you. To know that I was, like, ready for the... The proper game, I guess. I don't, I don't really know for sure. But it was, it was like a trick question, you know? Did he do it then by himself without me or something? It could be. It could be that he was the one who did it. But he was testing us to see if we thought of that as being our fault as well. Even though I didn't make the choice. So, I thought that was interesting. I'm guessing that's why you're after the right. Guess I didn't need to ask. It's written all over your face. I can tell how much he meant to you. But... And this is a big but. 
Okay, then. <laughs> if this right is the real deal, using it will mean killing someone and stealing their soul. Is that a problem? It doesn't feel like she thinks it's a problem. <laughs> if it comes to that, I'm afraid I'll have to stop you. Oh. That's a shame. A shame, huh? That's all? I'd thought, if I'm going to be competing with other curse bears, then your detective skills might come in useful. You realize you're talking about ending someone's life, right? Don't you see an issue with that? I think any parent in my position would happily kill for a chance like this. That's so, is it? Oh dear, oh dear. What have I gotten myself into? Hmm. I always need to check to see if she has any new thoughts. But it is really interesting. Um, so we've done both of these now. we also done this. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what, why don't I tell you what I've found and then we can make a decision. Alright. Yes? <laughs> uh, yes? Uh... Am I not gonna... Yeah, so they tried to get him into a car, and the only thing that makes sense to me is if they were somebody that he would have a reason to trust. Hmm. A teacher, perhaps. Or a relative. Or somebody else that he knew. But all of the adults who each he knew had alibis. The police checked them all thoroughly. They did, huh? No one throws numbers at a problem like the cops. But what if it wasn't someone he knew, or rather... What if the culprit disguised themselves as a police officer? Hmm... Wait, I thought he had a mold on the other side. <laughs> that would explain why he didn't find them suspicious. The Shigima family was clo uh, has close ties with the police, after all. He would have had a reason to trust them. You might be right. But surely, I couldn't have. Well, there's a problem with the theory. You'd be surprised how much police officers stand out. That's sort of the point, after all. They're meant to be visible deterrent against crime. You didn't miss a couple of characters last time, but are you kind of happy you get to play as her or like to know more? Mm. See, now he has the, the mold on this side. What is going on? <laughs> Sometimes the best hiding spot is, is right at display. That's true. That is true. But here's another interesting little bit of trivia I happen to know. When you ask people to imagine someone suspicious... Nobody pictures women or children. Even kids who have been warned about stranger danger often subconsciously expect that danger to look like an adult man. Besides, Shuichi was the sort of boy who wanted to be a police officer when he grew up. He must have had a very strong sense of right and wrong. That's right. Wait, surely you can't mean. Now you're getting it. If, say, a young woman approached Shuichi asking for help, what would he have done? 
Hmm. If someone like that said they were lost and asked him for directions, would he have gotten into a car? He might have. Is that like beer No, it's a mold. <laughs> hey, Scoot. You want a head pat? You can get a head pat. There we go. There we go. How you doing, Scoot? How old was the son? He was 11. Yeah, he might have. My husband always told him that a man had the duty to watch out for women and children. You could certainly argue that kind of attitude is outdated nowadays. But if Shuichi believed it, then we might have something here. Then you... You think the culprit was a young woman? But it was a man's voice on the phone. While well, he could have worked with another person. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Wait, are you still playing? In that view, it doesn't show on the other side. Yeah, it was showing on this side in profile. And then it was and showing here now. She might have been an accomplice, or maybe she didn't even realize she was being used. If anything, that would explain why she hasn't come forward. She herself might not realize she had anything to do with the case. Hmm. Yeah, she doesn't have any new thoughts. <laughs> Just finished up. How's the game going? It's going going pretty well. It's getting more and more interesting, too. But yeah, go follow Chris. Go do it. Do it. I saw you all open Helldivers one by one. <laughs> oh, no. Clever wanted to join, too. So, the question is, did anybody see Shuichi speaking with a young woman on the day of his disappearance? See, what I said about people's biases, that goes for witnesses too. And I figured that maybe if I started asking new questions, I might get some new answers. So I spent my day asking around Shuichi's school route, seeing if anyone had seen something. And one man thought he had. Do you mean he saw it happen? Well, I can't say that for sure yet. It turned out he wanted something from me, so I asked if we could talk in private. It turned out he wanted something from me. I don't know, sometimes it's hard to know where to put emphasis on things, because I don't know if it's gonna, like... <laughs> It can mean so many different things. I don't know. Um, but are we all doing well? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Mm. <laughs> are you though? <laughs> I want eight people squads and hull divers. Heck divers, please. This is a good wholesome stream. <laughs> totally Christian stream. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Of course, Japanese games and their flashbangs. Several hours late, uh, earlier, not later. All right. This should do. There's no one around. We can speak in confidence. Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me. What was your name again? Jonouchi. Jono Jonouchi? Got it. Well. Jonouchi. 
jo Jono Uchi. I'm all ears. Just so we're on the same page. You're a private detective investigating Shuichi Shigima's kidnapping. Do I have that right? Of course. What else do I look like? How should I know what a private detective looks like? Oh, forget it. Look, I'll tell you straight. My life is in danger. I need your help. You'll excuse me if that caught me a little off guard. Let me ask you straight. Who's trying to kill you? A student called Michio Shiraishi. Shiraishi. <laughs> Interesting. A schoolgirl, eh? Sounds like you've been naughty. It's nothing like that. That girl, she's a murderer. Oh, yeah, she, he's probably talking about the other... As soon as he said that it was a schoolgirl, I was like, oh, it's probably the other curse bearer. Um, the one that we accidentally killed in the prologue. Hmm... <laughs> Grounded for one more forever. <laughs> forever laundry still? Oh no, clever. I hope, hope it's over soon. But thank you for the lurk. What a nice young lady. Yeah. <laughs> Yeeshaw. <laughs> John Uchi was feeling naughty. Indeed, indeed. I actually even forgot that I had uh, <laughs> that emote added. <laughs> yeah, she's a murderer. I'm the only one who knows, but I saw what she did. Michio Shiraishi. I saw her kidnap Shuichi Shigima. Come again? Hold on, let me check. I kind of want to check the story chart, but I don't want to... No, no, no! No. May I come again? I saw her talk to him on the street and let him away. I didn't think much of it at the time, but then he went missing. She murdered him, I'm sure of it. Or at least, she's got something to do with it. It's the second day <laughs> Uh... Yeah, careful now. Careful now, Chris. <laughs> um... That's what you're here for, isn't it? Then you can't let her get to me. If that's true, you've been sitting on some valuable information. Why didn't you tell anybody? Well, you see... If you can't explain that, I don't have any reason to believe you. I, I couldn't! Yeah, because if she's a curse bearer, how are you supposed to explain that? I don't know. Chris feel like the rest of us. <laughs> she told me she'd kill me if I spoke a word. You're telling me a schoolgirl had you scared for your life? So you've been sitting on that all this time? And you think she's coming for you now that you've spilled the beans? Yes, that's it. Exactly. I'm begging you, don't let me let her get don't let her get me. Arrest her, I'm telling you. She's a demon. Hmm. Well, you seem to believe what you're saying. But it just doesn't add up. If the girl he's talking about is the, the curse bearer, because I don't remember if that was her name or not, so I can't say for sure, then obviously I believe him. But if not, he could also be very convincing in trying to put the blame on someone else. I don't know. 
but it just doesn't add up. How could a schoolgirl have a fully grown man so terrified? You don't know what she can do. She'll, she'll curse me. Okay, it is probably her. Curse you? Hello! Welcome in! Welcome in! Welcome in, Steve! Welcome in! How you doing? How you doing? Thank you so much for the raid! How was your stream? Hope you had a good stream. What were you playing today? What were you playing? Welcome in, everybody! You playing Stardew Valley? Are you playing the new update? Are you playing on, on the Switch? I know that the update... Well, I mean, didn't it come out now? Or, uh... Has it not happened yet? Um, a hey, full shot. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, <laughs> Man, thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a good one. Um, but yeah, for those of you who are new here, uh, my name is Repricos. You can call me Vep. Vepri. Uh, I'm a Norwegian streamer. I usually play some RPGs and and uh, some some uh, indie games or. Metroidvanias, some Souls likes, whatever. Honestly, I feel like I play most things. <laughs> right now, we're playing a visual novel, though. A horror visual novel, but uh, more mystery than, than spooky. And um, yeah, yeah, having a pretty chill time. Having a pretty chill time here. You're uh, playing Stardew Valley for the first time on PC, so no idea. Oh, I see, I see. I mean, if you're playing on PC, then you're probably also <laughs> playing with the update. <laughs> uh, on the 4th, so not yet. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah, so it's on Monday then. You love my background? Thank you so much! Also, thank you so much for the follow. We do have anonymous follows. For those of you who just want to lurk in peace and just, you know... Not, not have any attention drawn to you, but um, but yeah, how are you enjoying Stardew Valley though? How far are you into it? Orion here is also very, very into Stardew Valley and also Black Cats as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into the game. Um, but also, if you need to raid and run, obviously do do whatever you need to do. Um, all 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 is uh, we're, we're just gonna be here. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like it's because I've been reading so much that I, now I don't know how to talk without actually reading what I'm supposed to say. It's like oh, my brain can't function anymore. <laughs> uh. But still in spring season. Mm. Nice, nice. Fox, yeah, I have, I have, I have a fox on my mic, and I have a fox uh, uh, plushie in my background. It's a very fun game. Mm. Are you going to bounce though? You, it's late and you're exhausted. Totally understandable. Yeah, go, go, take care of yourself. Do after stream care and just you know, chill, relax, get some good food maybe. Or just, you know, go to sleep with that, if that's what you're gonna do. Um, a script for me to read. <laughs> Got a bloody nose up the butt. I do not remember saying that at all. <laughs> I'm trying to think of when I said that and in what context, and I can't figure it out. <laughs> um... You called your cat in the game tarnished? Your only <laughs> accomplishment. <laughs> oh, that's cute though. I'm glad that you picked a cat though. That's cute. I had a cat too in, in my uh, first playthrough of Stardew Valley and I named him after my, my cat series. I think they were two separate lines back to back. Probably. That, that would make more sense. <laughs> that would make more sense, yeah. Yeah, so we're uh, we we're, we're just trying to to think of some or figure out a a mystery here. Well, I guess several mysteries, really. Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're losing me here. It's true, her house. It's 
Ah, forget it. Why do I even bother? You seem dubious enough to believe me, but I should have known you'd never understand. Enough. I'll find someone else to help me. Hey. Hmm. Flashbang again. You'd love to see it. And that's about the long and short of it. I... I can hardly believe it. At the time, I thought his mention of curses was just crazy talk. But I'm starting to see that there might have been more to it. Then, if we can just find that girl... Curse or no curse, if she was with, with Shuichi one, uh, on the day of the kidnapping, then there's a good chance she knows something. On top of that, I did some digging on the man I spoke to. His full name is Kohei Chonouchi. He's a teacher at Komagata High School here in Sumida. Oh, so he's probably her teacher, I'm guessing. A teacher? Then the schoolgirl. Is one of his students? I think that's very likely. Hmm. 360, he's like showing his ass to <laughs> See, th those were also two lines uh, that were not connected. Um. At last, we got a lead. Hopefully it will be a the breakthrough we we're looking for. Okay. About the investigation. You know, we still need to figure out exactly what you want me to do. Tell you what. Why don't I tell you what I found and then we can make a decision. Okay. All right. So we need to pro we need to talk more about this to be able to progress more here. If it makes you uncomfortable, then you won't have to get any blood on your hands yourself. I don't need you to kill the other curse bearers. I only need you to find them. I won't be party to murder. Ma'am. Not even for a client. That's a lie because we already know from the prologue that he... He... Uh, went back on his word here. I mean, he did say, didn't they say that he was in debt? Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Um... His ho a soft-hearted nature leads him to take on too many cases and has put his office in dire financial straits. How he is still in business is a mystery, with some whispering that a wealthy patron is keeping him afloat. So that wealthy patron could be us. Or, you know, this person we're playing as here. So I feel like we have to say that. I think it's like that's how... But I'm also tempted to just say this and go back, because it's probably going to let me say both. Wasn't he in the background when she did the thing? She, he was, exactly. And he was the one who told her about him having the lighter in his pocket. And in the game also, say last time when you were about to go back and save that you would be able to see everything without going back and save? Yes, yes, I did. That's a shame. I see. I didn't realize you were so stubborn. Let me say though, it's not like I don't get what you're going through. As long as you're not killing anyone with your own hands, maybe I can help you out. What do you have in mind? Well, how about stealing someone else's curse stone after they filled it with soul dregs? Hmm. 
If that was all you were after, then I could lend you my services guilt-free. If the other curse bearers want to kill each other, that's their business. I'm not trying to be a hero here. I guess there's no guarantee a stolen curse don't work, but we can worry about that later. Well then, I suppose we have a deal. Okay, so I didn't have to offer him money to, to help me out. And this also leaves our hands clean, I guess. This is kind of, I love that you don't have to like f have a fear of missing out on making or making the wrong choice because you can just always go back and change your decision. Although, what if I stole a curse stone using my curse? Would you disapprove? That would void our contract, ma'am. Just warning you now. My. Hmm. About my curse. Did you know how she knows about the curses? Uh, yeah, we did read about it. Um, before we go any further, why don't you tell me about that curse of yours? The Haunting Clappers, was it? That's one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, if I remember correctly. I don't like it when the music stops because it's so quiet. <laughs> That's right. The original story did happen somewhere near here, I think. I'm sure I remember hearing that. In that case, my money would be on all the curse bears being somewhere in Honjo. Our first move should be to narrow them, them down. Some of them are bound to try and come for you first. We need to be ready. The curses make their bears more willing to kill, so an attack could come from anywhere. That sounds sensible. Hmm. Yeah, so let me see. I guess it doesn't actually mention anything about her uh, getting the curse stone and everything here. Um... But I'm, I mean, the way that it appeared that they told us last time was that as long as you have like a, you'll be more susceptible to uh, becoming a curse bear, the more bloodlust you have and the more, uh, or like the, the more you want to kill. So I guess she actually received it when... Okay, so the way that this whole thing started, like this uh, chapter that we're on right now, I guess that's when she received it because they were in the middle of a conversation and she just kind of zoned out and had like a, a flashback or something or like a vision of um, someone burning. And then she just, he said that he had never seen her smile like that before and it was because you know, when she reacts like this, it's like, my heart is still racing. R racing, that's after she had the vision. This is it, my chance at long last. And she was also talking about having some bloodlust and stuff. So I think it happened right as we were in this room talking to him. But about my curse. And if I remember correctly, your haunting clappers can set people on fire, but only if they have a naked flame or a lighter on their person, is that right? That's right. In olden times, wooden clappers were used to warn people of fire. I'm guessing it punishes those who don't heed the warning. It seems like a good curse to have. It's simple and straightforward enough to use. 
Although it's hard to say how it stacks up without knowing what else is on the table. You really think it's that good? The target can't do much to throw, to throw it off, and it has a nice long activation window. It's big that it works on lighters too. Slip one into your target's pocket. And say that condition... And say that condition were already fulfilled before they even knew you're there. They wouldn't even know what hit them. And she already did that to us when we played as... Uh, Shogo? I think the name was. She already said that the, the, the requirements have already been fulfilled for me to activate my curse. And that's the interesting thing, because, you know, she had no way of knowing that he had a lighter in her in his pocket. But he knew, so he told us, or he told her, and that's how she knew. And that's why it was so difficult to figure out what the conditions were. Got the lighter from him? No, 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 we had the like, lighter before we talked to him. Uh, I picked it up. Um, uh, at the second stop, I think, after the, the playground. So it was when we find the, when we ended up killing the first person. Oh, the second person. You know, when we were dragged into the, the building that was completely dark. And that was the, the curse, the conditions for the curse to activate for that person that we killed. Because they could only kill in complete darkness. So we had the lighter that we picked up on the ground. And lit it in the dark room, and then he couldn't kill us. But yeah, it's... <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of information. Um, but yeah, th that happened at the beginning last time, so it, it can also be difficult to remember. Um, as well, like, I do recommend, though, watching like the first mod as well, if this is intriguing in any way. Wasn't that like full widescreen, like Heckin' Strong Lighter? I don't remember if it was that bad, but it was like the, the, the person having... Like, the person trying to curse us was... Had a very strong reaction to it, at least. Um, maybe I won't have to actually use it. I could just tell someone I could, and they'd have to do what I said. The threats could work. Although with any, without any proof, it'll come down to how convincing you can be. If only you could use the curse, then back out at the last second. And that's kind of what happened, even though it wasn't her choice. But when we, we encountered her as the other character, and we threw away the lighter, and she seemed so shocked... But then it was like, she didn't have any leverage anymore. At the last second? What an interesting idea. I have a lighter right here. We could try it now. That's an interesting prop proposition. But maybe not. I'm not quite crazy enough to make myself a guinea pig. Oh, I see. You're an odd one, ma'am. If you don't mind me saying... And I don't think it's just the curse. You flatter. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of info and there will be a test so you all better be taking notes. <laughs> hey, at least you have uh, you have study material uh, on 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 the YouTube if you want to. Used to somewhat want to be in a, a detective when you were young, very young. I can understand that. It seems very interesting in a way. About my curse. As for what we do next, first of all, I think you should stay indoors. Try not to do anything spontaneous or outside your normal routine. 
Okay, now we can do this. Right then. Have you decided what you want me to... Working on? Well, I mean... Okay, so this is very 50-50. <laughs> I mean, there's only two choices, but it's like... Uh, out of all of them, I feel like she is the one who has the the best reason to perform the right resurrection out of all of them. Because she lost her son. And it was for such an un... Unfair reason as well. And... Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Because one would be that he just goes about it the... Um, the normal way. The other way, it's like getting him to help us with the rights. But we also don't have to kill someone to do it, necessarily. We could also go around the whole killing part. We don't actually have to do it. You know? Maybe? I don't really know yet, because... In this house, we support women's rights. Exactly. Well, oh, we, we need to be careful with that now. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the new rules on Twitch. You have to... You have to, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me, let me open it and see. Um, also, we're getting an ad soon, so I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just gonna run the ads while I read this for you. Anyway, uh, not gonna do anything in the game while there's an ad. Okay, let me, let me see. New politics and sensitive social issues. We launched content classification labels last year to give you more control over the communities you build and to give viewers more control over the content they watch. Today, we're introducing a new CCL, content classification labels, um, to label streams that include discussions or debates about politics or sensitive social issues so that viewers can decide if they want to engage with this content. This type of label is common across the industry and can also help uh, advertisers better align with their ads, well, better align their ads with content that reflects their brand values. For more details on when you should apply the politics and sensitive social issues, uh, check out the content classification guidelines. Yeah. And um, the... Uh, I don't remember what the... what the specifics were, but it, it was like... I do remember a lot of people commenting on this on 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 the internet saying, oh, so my 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 uh, my whole existence is a uh, is a uh, social a social issue, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or sensitive social issue um, for some people. So yeah, gotta gotta be careful now on on Twitch. <laughs> what do you talk about? Um, yeah, it's 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 so stupid. It's so stupid. It's like uh, sure, like talking about politics. Like elections and stuff, I can understand that, but like life in itself is polit like politics is life, it, like whether we want it to be or not. So you know, realistically, would be in trouble if talking about like stuff or joking or something. I I don't know. Basic rights for people are not political. In a way, it is, though. Um, it's just politics is, is more wide than you think. It's just not necessarily...
I don't know how much you would be in trouble for it, honestly. I don't know. I mean, maybe just me talking about it could be... <laughs> could be an issue. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just letting you guys know that they, they added that now, a few days ago. <laughs> in game, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's it's uh, it's just because I haven't marked the uh, the content to be about it, but it's because it's not. But that's kind of how it is with stream, though. You know, you talk about things; it just comes up naturally. You don't necessarily plan on talking about things. It's just how the, the flow of the, the conversation will go sometimes. So marking the content as being about certain issues is like, but I, you know, most people don't really plan this, you know, it just happens. You're just joking. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, so I'm wondering, should we, I'm kind of intrigued and kind of want to see if we can do the, the right thing without actually killing anyone. It should be possible. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, mm, well. Because I feel like we're gonna have to do the right as uh, anyway, but it's like, is this gonna be with or without him? So it's like, am I just gonna have him investigate the kidnapping in the normal way and then I'm gonna do the the thing with the right? I don't know. Might as well have him with us for it. Investigate the right, help with the kidnapping. <laughs> I think I want to try this. It's like, it's very difficult to know exactly what each of them mean. Or like what one would exclude. I don't know. Bringing my son back is more important. Um. Well, it's not necessarily that, but the thing is, her son could also tell us who killed him. This is also what I talked about last time, about how the right could be useful if it's just to bring them back for like a little bit if it's not a permanent thing at least it will be able to help you figure out um you know if it's a murder case and they can help you by by getting you on the right track about who was behind it all and stuff you know Worst case scenario, you can burn and perish your game files to start over. It's not like the prologue was too long. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can you can go back. I can show you once we. I can't show you now because if I click if I click on it, it will just. I would have to start doing this all over again. Um, but the um, story chart here. Uh. I, it means that I don't have to start and, and do the, the whole prologue from the beginning. I want you to help me with the rite of resurrection. Roger that. The rite it is. Also good that the other curse bearers are also working by night. Anyone they kill under the cover of darkness won't be discovered until sunrise. I bet they'll be trying to do as much as they can before morning comes. So it's settled then. I'll look into the other curse bearers by night. And we already know that he already did this. He already did this because he was on the bridge meeting the other character we played as and like snooping into what we were doing there at night. But we didn't know at the time that he knew about the curses and stuff. You know? And once the city wakes up and I can start asking questions, I'll investigate the kidnapping as well. See? So he's doing both. I'll even try and find Miss uh, Shiraishi as part of the bargain. Thank you. That's more than enough. Hmm. 
Maddie, how you doing, Maddie? Hello. But does this mean in this timeline, the other you played as is like dead then then? Not at this point uh, yet. Because this is before we met him. But I don't know where he, when he, well, I mean, he died at like 5 a.m. or something in the morning. Or at least that's when he was found. But we still don't know what happened in between. In between. You will you will understand when I show you the, the different timelines and stuff. You go sleep, have a great night, you lovely beans. You too, Scoot. Have a good night and sleep well. Yoko, was it? Yes, 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 yes. So the night hasn't happened yet? No, I think it's the same night. Um... That is about to happen. It's been an anxiety day as you've been in bed, in bed all, all day. Just finished the new Life is Strange game. Ooh. I'm sorry, though, that you've had a bad, bad rain day. I hope, I hope you're feeling better now. Aren't there, like, three chapters or something now? And then it's not fully out yet. Like, they still have some more chapters to, to release. But how did you like it? I hope, hope you you enjoyed it. Okay, she doesn't doesn't have any new thoughts there. Now then, I should get to work. There's only so much time before sunrise. I'll call you if I find out anything new. You stay here and keep a lookout. All right. There's no telling what kinds of curses you might find out on the streets tonight. Don't go outside if you can help if you can help it, and try to be ready for anything. I will. Well, if that's all, I should be going. Mm. Okay, now I can show you. Okay, so here you see. Um, before game is out now, uh, it was so much fun to play, but the last chapter is a little weird. And regarding your anxiety, it's still there, but you'll be fine. Yeah, just, just, you know. Go easy on yourself. Just do, do things that make you, you feel good or comfortable. You're kind of debating if you want to play the new Life is Strange game, but you don't even have a platform for it right now. Is it only on PlayStation 5, not 4? But yeah, so here you see, this is the Shogo Uki uh, timeline that we did, which is the prologue. So we went here, and this is the result of the way we went uh, here. So this is when uh, Yoko died. And this is when we met the uh, investigator, or the, the, the det detective. And this is when we met her, that we're playing as now. So you see, this is completely empty now. Nothing happened in between. So what we did here was that instead of turning around, you know, when she saw something behind us, us turning around and then turning back to her was what killed her. So what we had to do was just not turn around and just not yell at her, but like kind of call to her and just make her snap out of it. And then she kind of came to. And we managed to get her to leave, go home in a taxi. As long as we just promised to stay at the, the playground and uh, continue doing what she was doing, looking for signs and stuff. Um, and then we ended up like she did here. This, this ended up happening to us instead here. So we don't actually know what happened in between if we were just at the playground the entire time, uh, looking for signs of the the um well the mystery 
Um, that's what you played it on, PlayStation 4? Oh, no, on PlayStation 5, I see, I see. But it doesn't show the rest after you met her? What do you mean? In that line, we need to go further. Oh, so it's it's based on the time of day. Um, so this was 5 a.m. And when we found her and talked to her, that was earlier in the night. So this is just based on the time of day. Um, But when I play this him, there's no line after? You mean here? I think it's just showing the time of day, really. Because you see here, it's like the moon. And here's the sun. So it's just... Basing this on, on the time of day. So meeting the, the student that I stopped at last time was like not that significant. I guess, because he's not a, a main story character. You see, these are the people that we're supposed to play as, uh, that are the main characters. So the student, he wasn't really necessary. Here it's showing him, because he's part of the overall story. And it's showing her, because she's also part of the story. This game actually spoopy? I I wouldn't say so, really, but I wouldn't say that it doesn't have like a lot of jump scares or, or stuff like that. It's more like it's more like a mystery, but with supernatural stuff. Um, but then again, I'm not very sensitive when it comes to these things, so I'm not the right person to answer that. Even though, like, I, I can't really do a lot of horror stuff. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know. It's not the bo Yeah, this is the student that we were talking to her about. Where the, the detective said that um, her son went with this student. And I'm pretty sure it was... No, it wasn't her. That wasn't her name. It was a different student. Because the guy that the detective was talking to, he said a different name. I just don't remember the name of um, of the girl. But it wasn't her. Unless she gave a different name? I don't know. I feel like it was a different name, though, that he, uh, said. Who's the middle person? This is the, the police detective. You know, the, the two, um, police officers that were together? Or investigators? That we ran into at the, the cemetery? But yeah, so what it shows is that once we have done everything we can in a chapter, it will be like grayed out, so we don't have to do anything else here. We've done everything we can. But when there's more things to do, it will be highlighted like this. So we, we haven't gone into the storylines of these two yet. We just started uh, here after the prologue. This is actually kind of- it is! It is really cool. A nice thought. A summary of previous events. Despite having obtained the curse of the haunting clappers, Haru Shigima is determined to use the rite of resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs her private investigator, Richter, to find the other curse bearers. Yes, so... We already knew that he would do that, so I wonder what would have happened if we just asked him to investigate the murder, or the kidnapping, I mean. Because that would have deviated from the, the, the story we already knew 
had happened. So something tells me that it would have ended like this anyway. But I don't know. Shigima Mansion reception reception room. <laughs> it's been almost an hour since Richter left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened. But he hasn't. So all I can do is wait. And wait. Sorry for just popping in real quick like this, but do you feel like you need to go to sleep and hope for the anxiety to be gone when you wake up? Of course, of course, do do whatever you want to do and or need to do. Uh, and also, don't don't ever apologize for just stopping in and, and saying hi. I appreciate it. But yeah, please feel better. I hope you feel better. And just rest. Take it easy. And can you go back if it's great? You can. I think you can, yeah. I know it's dangerous to go out. But I can't just sit here and let this opportunity pass me by. I have to look for her. From Michio Shiraishi. Yeah, so this was the name of the girl. And that was not the same name that was at the bottom. But first, I need to find more soul dregs. Should I put a record on? No, it's too late for that. I'm not in the mood for music anyway. The flowers put me at ease. Just a little. That old hanging scroll. I've seen it too often to feel anything from it now. I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. It's a fax machine. I rarely find a use for it. I don't know anybody else who owns one. <gasps> a newspaper? What's this? A newspaper? It must have fallen off the chair. Let's read it. That's a newspaper. I only leave them in here for the guests. I hardly ever read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one, over one in years, in fact. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. Mm, look at the society article. We're just gonna start from the top. You think that you might not be getting sick to, sick after all? June was sick, but is now better, and you think you managed to not be sick sick, but you mean you still could get something? Hopefully you won't. I feel like so many people have gotten sick lately, but I hope you, you managed to, to avoid it, Orion. Look at the society articles. It looks like the city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum for all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stank so badly it'll make my eyes water. Eventually, people started getting sick, and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten much better since then. Or, for fortunately, it's, got, it's gotten better since then. <laughs> I just added much. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smog. Come to think of it, I never offered him any tea. Not that I ever learned how to make it. <laughs> I mean, making tea isn't that complicated. I'm sure you could figure it out. Look at the economy articles. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220 to 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar is down from its height and people are saying it could all further. It could fall further, is what I meant to say. <laughs> There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past few years. It's common to own a car and television now, and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. I wonder why they're not, like, checked off. 
Okay, it's because I didn't... That, that's what I was thinking. Is it because there's more? If there's one thing Honjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. They found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. Interesting. I wonder if that's why the other two police officers were there uh, at night. But no, wasn't that the a, a cemetery though? No, it was a park. It was just a park. It wasn't a cemetery, was it? A lot of my family are in the police. I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore. Not since last year. It brings back bad memories. Uh, but if you have questions about the specific curse thing, would it be okay to ask or like, like think, theorize? You don't want to take anything away from your experience or like theorize too much? Not seen or looked anything about this game? Um, I don't know. I, th I think it should be okay, but it's, it's kind of hard for me to say before knowing what it is you're gonna say. <laughs> you know, it's hard to know if we uh, I don't know. It's probably okay, though. Suicide at local high school. Oh, I remember that. A high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. Okay, so this is probably the friend of the girl that we are also going to play as later on. The high school student. And this is probably the friend that she wants to resurrect. She was bullied, I think. Or maybe it was something about exam pressure? What? But... No, this can't be right. Her name? Michio Shiraishi from Komagata High School. Okay, 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 now I have a theory. I mean, it's it seems pretty obvious to me. So the girl here, who ended up jumping from that roof, she's the one who helped kidnap her son she might not have known, as the detective said, she might have done that without knowing what she was an accomplice of, or, um... And maybe she felt so guilty about it that she ended things when she found out. So she is gone now. But her friend is the curse bearer who wants to bring her back. It's all connected. Like, all of them are connected and so cool. <laughs> I love how all of it is connected. Michio Shiraishi from Komagata High School? It can't be. Yeah, so we looked at everything there. So she is dead now. So he couldn't have tracked her down to talk to her anyway, the detective. It would make sense then to get to know other stuff then, other perspectives as well. Hmm. Look at the economy articles. Although with everyone uh, flocking to the city, land prices are skyrocketing. Nowadays, most people can only dream of home ownership. This was in the 70s, early 80s. Well, just, just try living now. <laughs> just try living now. <laughs> the city center is going to be nothing but apartments before long. Hmm. I'm not exactly a businesswoman, so this all feels like another world to me. Look at the culture articles. It would all make sense then to get to know other stuff than other perspectives as well. Yeah. It is so cool though, I like it. I feel like it's very well done. Now that everyone has more, spend, uh, has more spending money to go around, people are coming up with all kinds of new di uh, diversions. It seems like only yesterday that people were flocking to the arcades to shoot aliens. 
But now we have these enormous theme parks and gaming machines that plug straight into our televisions. Okay, so it is the 80s then. <laughs> Everyone's talking about superhero series, foreign films, and movies about uh, movies based on the latest bestseller. Back in my day, fusion rock and folk music was all the rage. <laughs> but now it's all about city pop and idols. I find it hard to care about that sort of thing anymore. I hear the new big thing is some mascot line of delinquent birds. Mockingbirds, I think it's called. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. <laughs> was that what Richter was talking about? Trends seem to have such short shelf lives now. With how with how quickly the, thi uh, the, the times are changing. Um, I think I'm just too old to keep up anymore. It's young people who are leading the way with their modern world views. My generation will only fall further behind. Isn't she just like 30 or something? Relax. Uh, but if this curse takes effect, if the other one has active fire, like lighter that is not active fire, but can make fire, I guess, then what other object that could make fire would work for the curse like does it need to have all the requirements for fire did it also say if you can curse yourself on purpose or by accident i don't think it said anything about yourself i don't think it said anything about yourself but it did um it's only something that can make fire on its own so it's like let's say you had um a firecracker or like fireworks on you that wouldn't be enough because you would still need a lighter to 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 light it up you know um so it's only something that can make fire on its own i guess or a fire that has already been made what about smokes i don't well i mean you're supposed to be carrying it on you though so I guess it depends. A cigarette, yes, but only if it's already been lit. It can't just be a regular cigarette that hasn't been used yet at all. Because if it's just anything that is flammable, then it could be anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anything that can can burn. Um, look at the education articles. Everyone attends high school now, even girls. Universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. I wonder what that changed uh, in in the. In, in Japan. Education is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running, uh, in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities has gotten fierce though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency are on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to read anymore. It only remind me of him. Mi Michio Shiraishi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, committed suicide last week. But that means... Mr. Jonouchi was terrified of someone who already died? Is that what he meant by a curse? I can't work this out on my own. Maybe Richter will know. Why won't he call? Oh, I haven't left it off the hook, have I? Hmm. Thank you, ghost. Wait. Never mind. <laughs> what if the... Uh, human bodies are full of... But... 
yeah, but you know. <laughs> it's something that can burn then and there that wouldn't require something else to ignite, you know? You would have to have all the, the necessary stuff to light the fire then and there, not some extra additional thing to light it. What if the lighter was out of the juice thing? You forgot the name. Would it still work or if you soaked it in water? Mm. Well, soaking it in water would probably work, though, because if it still has the lighter fluid in it, I think it would still count. Um, but if it was out of the, the lighter fluid, I don't think it would count. That's just my theory, though. You kind of want a fidget lighter, or like me and also other fidget stuff. You've seen some very cool stuff on the internet. Mm. Aren't human bodies also actively burning as well? Yeah, but now we're getting very, very technical, though. <laughs> um, I really like thinking about this type of stuff. Yeah. Look at the television articles. I don't really watch much television. It feels as if all the information in the world gets passed through that little black box. But father stopped them from reporting on the kidnapping back when it happened. I was glad about that. Less fuss. You don't mean that it would work on the curse? Okay, okay. I thought we were still talking about the curse. <laughs> um... Now the comedy boom is all is over. All the comedians are flocking to other genres. The occult seems re really popular at the moment. Look at all these paranormal specials. Okay, we have looked at everything. Yeah, I'm supposed to. Uh, to ah. My husband used to complain that it was too dark, but I rather like the gloom. The ticking seems so loud. It just goes to show how quiet it is. Okay. I'm waiting for Richter to contact me, but he hasn't. I made sure the receiver is on the hook. It'll ring as soon as he calls. Ah! <laughs> that must be him. Answer. Hello, Shigima residence. Do nothing. Yeah, I I would do that too. But Komagata Bridge. Richter called me out to meet him, and we came here to Komagata Bridge. Richter, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was just thinking the same thing. See, now he has the mold on that side again. <laughs> I wonder if it was drawn on, like, on the other side and then you just kind of flipped it and didn't even think about it, maybe? I don't know. He's gazing down at the water. What does he see down there, I wonder? The Sumida River. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night, when it's still, when it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Is the Sumida River that you, what you Hanjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Well, wasn't that where they found her son, though? Then it's understandable. Right. Should have guessed. This is where they found him after he went missing. All alone. Floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been. How cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? 
come here every day since then. And I pray to the river to give him back. To give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed the rivers marked where our old our world met the next. So the act of crossing flowing water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. This is why vampires can't cross running water. Isn't it? Because they don't actually have a... a soul anymore, technically? They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. The same place would later become Honjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the Ryogoku uh, Bridge sprang, sprang up after the Great Fire of Meireki, and just like that, Honjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. Weren't those to prevent flooding? That's what I was told. They were, but that's not all they were for. Their other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore and stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one too. So, if I have this right, are you saying that Honjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly. That's why the right of resurrection is here, rather than anywhere else. I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the Seven Mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess that would make the spot we're standing now, right over the water. The border between life and death. If there ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river. That might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Or is that supposed to make me feel better? <laughs> Just thinking aloud, ma'am. Hmm. Well, it's a nice thought. <gasps> we have an updated page. It's just because he's so cool, it gives the face some mystery. <laughs> you forgot your own punchline off. <laughs> I kind of want a hat like that, even though you think it's not quite your thing. Hey, you never know. I feel like most people would fit just anything, as long as they have the confidence to, to, to wear it, you know? Class A river that is part of the Araka Arakawa River system, which runs through much of eastern Tokyo and empties into Tokyo Bay. During the Edo period, Sumida's riverbanks played a key role in the transportation of lumber used for construction. In addition to its lo logistical importance, it was also a place for the common folk to gather and enjoy activities, such as seasonal flower viewing or river bathing. And there exists, uh, exist many woodblock prints depicting such activities. The area became plagued with sewage issues when the surrounding environs were industrialized in the post-war war period. But the situation has improved since. Many unique bridges span the Sumida River, including the Ryogoku and Azumabashi bridges, which attract a large number of visitors as sightseeing spots. 
Massing fi uh, massive firework displays in the summer are also always sure to draw a crowd. The river has served as a cornerstone for both the city and its people, having both aided in its development and serving as an inspiring backdrop for countless works of arts and literature. Uh... You wish you could wear more cool clothes, but you don't like shopping for clothes and you have too many sensory issues and maybe some other stuff as well. Are your clothes already have many are broken or too little? You also use headphones and feel like I feel with hats like those, it would be not possible. Yeah, you know what, Ryan? I just bought new ones. I just bought earbuds for the first time <laughs> uh, on on Wednesday. I bought I bought ear earbuds for the first time, just for that exact reason, so I can use um, use them at work or like have like hats on or uh, you know when it gets colder. I'm also not a, a um, an earbuds type of person. I do not like having things in my ear really, um, but. It really depends, though. Those are actually kind of okay. You also would need ones with cord not wireless. They would be lost so quickly. Mm. <sighs> yeah. I I don't know if I would have that issue, but I'm also worried about that too. <laughs> um. Yeah, the ones that I have are uh, noise cancelling as well. Um, we're on Komagata Bridge over the Sumida River. There's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. Komagata Bridge, one of the bridges spanning the Sumida River, completed in 1927 as part of the reconstruction effort following the Great Kanto Earthquake. It is notable both for its distinctive blue arches and the cutting edge for the time techniques used in its construction. There are many bridges stretching across the Sumida River, each boasting a unique structural form and design. I'm struggling to read more and more now, <laughs> the more I've been going. <laughs> uh, so I feel like I'm just, I keep mumbling everything. Uh... I need to make sure that I interact with everything, though. I think... I think that's all. Hmm. You have a dent on your head because your head set. Um, so you always wear a cap to... Uh, but... Do, do you... No. no never mind. Uh, yeah, I feel that too. Sometimes I feel like I, I, I'm I, getting a slight little dent here. That was also a good reason why I wanted to switch to earbuds. So at least I only have my headphones on while I'm streaming. And that's about it. <laughs> because I don't want to have the dent on my head. Even though I like have hair to cover it. But it's just... I don't know. I'm just thinking, what if I one day would have to... Loose all my hair, you know? <laughs> One day, you know? <laughs> you never know. Um, you wear caps a lot inside as well, especially now because your hair is just so long for you and get in the way. And it's also other sensory thing. Mm. You really don't really want to slay, just want to be comfortable. Hey, you can, you can do both. You can all, you can... Slay comfortably, Orion, if you want to. Uh, you know, that's that's why I like a really cool um, tracksuit. <laughs> because, like, those can also be cool, but they're also super comfortable. You can't have both. Um, I guess sometimes you wish you were a bit more cool in a very specific way. Mm. I can understand that. Your ball too, so there's not much help there. Ah, oh, I see, I see, I see. 
Gotta get that pale butt for G. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it depends on the butt. Some are quite uh, uh, bald. Most would probably be kind of bald, I would say. You're very insecure. Hey, that's fair, Ryan. It takes a lot of courage to stand out as well. I get it. Exactly, exactly. Why not both? Okay, I'm gonna say you go first. Please, go ahead. Alright then. I've been poking around places connected to the Seven Mysteries, looking for curse bearers. And I think I found a few candidates. But first, a tall man I ran into in Kinshi Boy Park. Yeah, this is the first person we ended up killing, and he was not a curse bearer. But he was sussy as all hell. All hell. I asked him for directions, tried to probe him a little, but he turned the questions right back around on me. And he was out there for the second... Uh, he was out of there the second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. But he's not. Then there's this middle-aged guy I saw in south of Wadigisui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. Okay, so this is the dude that we ended up killing when we had the lighter. Because I think this is the place where we would... When, where we went in and, and we were kind of... About to get killed. And I think it was by this guy, but we couldn't see him because it was in the dark. Isn't that the teacher? No, I thought that too at first. But I don't actually think it's him. The back of his head looks slightly different. And he also knew the name of that person, so he would have probably said the name. He had a nervous air about him, too. He was clear he was up to some shady business. Yeah, so he talks about him as if he doesn't know him, that it was just a, a first impress uh, impression. So I think this was the person that we ended up killing when we picked up the lighter. And uh, the condition for him to be able to kill people with his curse was being in complete darkness. Gathering soul dregs, I'd bet. Made him make a good target. Next up is a pair. A young man and a woman I saw around Ryogoku Bridge. This was the student. And this woman, you didn't see this, Orion, but she was standing behind us while we were talking to this dude. <laughs> um, this time, the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about, and he backpedaled and left. It was the dude, the one that we stopped at. You know, the cliffhanger for la from last time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. And he backpedaled and left. Yeah, I, and we saw today that she was standing behind us. I just didn't remember to turn around and, and look behind me, and she was just standing there, watching everything. Looks like they lurk around there often, looking for kindred spirits, would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair. Gathering soul dregs in a group might be a decent idea, if we could make it work. And we also got him to admit uh, how many soul dregs he had, and he had like 1%. But with things being how they are, it's got to be hard to find folks one can trust. They got brass, though. I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last is two detectives I've seen sniff sniffing around. The police are involved? Not necessarily. A body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Yeah, so this is what we read about in the, the newspaper. Do 
Does that mean he killed a non-cursed bearer? I would assume so. We didn't really know the st We didn't get to hear the story behind it, but it seems so. She was just standing there menacingly. <laughs> How's the game going? It's going pretty well. It's getting more and more interesting. The, the way it's all connected is very intriguing. Yeah, a body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that did the guy in. And if they were sending in detectives from the head office, then something's got to be up. How do you know they're, where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in this business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. We found all of them in so little time. I really did hire the best. It's all in the name, ma'am. Richter Kai. P.I. <laughs> that's so... <laughs> silly. Richter Kai. P.I. No, wait. Make that Richter Kai. Investigator Extraordinaire. My. An Investigator Extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? I feel like he does draw attention to himself. Yeah, I also said that he, he kind of looked like Michael Jackson. <laughs> you bet. An Investigator Extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. All well, that aside, the middle-aged man and the young uh, uh, couple sound the most promising. Am I right? She is actually right. The middle-aged man is the one that will give the most soul drinks. Well, we don't really know about the, the cops, though. Because we didn't, we never really killed them or anything, so we don't know how many they have. Yeah, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. It seems like the curse bears are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus, there's still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that'll get the pot nice and hot. And once it's boiling, our chance will come. Standing around is the last thing I want to do, be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to fritter it away. I am going to talk to him. I just want to see if anything popped up. Oh! <gasps> it's a sticker! Hey! Mockingbird number 18 discovered. Hey, it pays to look around. Ink Punisher. <laughs> a delinquent in, in, in a, a sailor uniform. A sailor school uniform. <laughs> uh, isn't that a flamingo? Yeah, it is. Wait, did I say something else? I probably did. It is, it is a flamingo. You are absolutely right. I don't even know what I said. A flamingo burbs. Oh, mockingbird. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I said mockingbird because it's, uh, because that's what they are. Like the 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 whole collection is called mockingbirds, not that it's an actual mockingbird. Hmm. Okay, let's talk to him again. There's something I need to tell you. What's up? Well, that girl, Michio Shiraishi, the one who was with Chuichi on the day of the kidnapping, that's her. Well, she's dead. 
She's what? The student who committed suicide last week. That was her. I heard something like that happen. I never got the name though. Talk about bad luck. It was literally in the newspaper. He's an investigator. Like he, he's a private detective. And he didn't catch her name when it was literally in the newspaper. <laughs> uh. I don't know. It doesn't look good for you now, my dude. Talk about bad luck. We finally get a lead, only to find it's turning to a little dead end. Unless her death was the, was the whole reason Ju Jono Uchi was so shaken up. He said she was going to curse him. Was he talking about her taking revenge from beyond the grave? It seems like we're back where we started. Not necessarily. A teacher knows something. I'm sure of it. At the very least, I'd put money on him having something to do with Miss Shiraishi's death. That's why he's so scared of being cursed by her. I see. And also... Something tells me he knows more about your son's kidnapping. I mean, it could be him that you mentioned, Ryan, that showed up that was like the, the middle-aged man. But I feel like if he talked to him, he would have recognized him, you know? Did you know back then about his stuff about the lead? Yeah, it was just an hour ago. And the newspaper can't have been new after midnight, I don't think. In any case, I think I've got a good idea what he's hiding. Call it a hunch. But like, if the news was a week ago? Yeah, but it was in the newspaper today. Or like, after we talked to him. Well, I mean, I guess it was before we talked to him as well. That's what I mean. Because it was in the newspaper. And we found the newspaper after we had talked to him and he mentioned her name. But I think the newspaper itself was from today, maybe. I don't know. It didn't say the date, I don't think. A hunch? Well, more of a theory. Care to take a guess? I forgot what the question was. Yeah, I've got an idea of what he, he's hiding. Call it a hunch. And that he knows more about the kidnapping. I'm just going to say I couldn't say because I want to say see what he says. I'm just an ordinary housewife. Not clever enough for all of this. Are you sure? I'd have you down for, a sharp, uh, for sharper than that. That's flattering, but I'm afraid you're mistaken. Anyway, that's enough speculation for now. The truth will out in time. Oh, I thought he would tell us, though. Right now, I think we need to have another chat with Mr. Jonouchi. <laughs> NST, yeah. Um. It's so nice when you can see the dialogue, what's happened, especially in games like these, but uh, you wish more games did that. I feel like it's fairly common with these types of games, though with visual novels, where it's basically mostly text. Um, approach the net. Bottom shelf, surrounded by darkness. Jackpot. Late at night, on the way home. Look about the first house, among the morning green, before hearing the, his the history in the bright garden. If you won the lottery, wait until you feel like yourself again. 
Detectives and private eyes. A ringing telephone booth. The excited detective. Waiting at the entrance in a park where sparrows sing. Waiting at the intersection. Unique looking pl pl playground. Revisiting the park at night. Okay, so some of these are probably... If I go back as well. Let's see. No self-deprecation. Don't say bad stuff about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, Baldur's Gate also has that. Didn't you want to tell me something? I've already said everything I wanted to say. So now then. Oh. The river, I guess. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. It must have been about 20 years now, when I was still a schoolgirl. Back then, the Sumida River was much filthier than it is now. It was full of garbage and, and industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy and it, it, slimy and it stank. You could look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating. That's awful! What? No! This probably happened IRL too. Wouldn't surprise me. And one day, among all the filth and garbage, there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand. What? What? It was almost a miracle when you stop to think about it. What were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognizable? And that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water, the part that was left would have an identifiable scar? And that they would tell, could tell that it had been a murder from the blade marks on the bone? Wait. Are you talking about the Njima murders? So you have heard of it. I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then. I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. Hmm. The Najima murders. Overview. A notorious case from over two decades ago involving the murder of a female high school student. It first came to the attention of the authorities when part of a human left hand was discovered floating in the Sumida River. Testing revealed it to belong to a missing female high school student. As it appeared to have been severed deliberately, the police launched a murder investigation. A large-scale search of the river was organized, but the highly polluted state of the water made this impossible. Visibility was poor, the stench was intense, and the divers quickly fell ill. They succeeded in recovering only the victim's head and what appeared to be part of her leg before the search was called off. At the time of the incident, the Sumida River was as polluted as it had ever been. Neither fish nor shellfish could survive in it, eventually causing the annual, annual fireworks festival to be called off indefinitely. Over the course of the search, the police discovered a number of unidentified human bones. This caused a stir among the public, as several other young women had gone missing in recent years in the Tokyo area, and it was feared that they may have fallen victim to the same fate. Forensic technologies at the time, however, were not advanced enough to determine the identities of the deceased, and so the police were, were unable to open any inquiries. Due to the overwhelming lack of circumstantial evidence, the investigation ground to a halt until a hitherto unrelated individual came to its attention. During a questioning about a separate incident, Fumichika Najima, a 36-year-old shop owner with no relation to the victim, divulged details about her that had never been released to the general public. An investigation into his background was conducted, leading to his arrest. Najima testified that he had snatched his victim from the street and confined her in the underground storeroom of his shop, which also served as his living quarters. 
He chose her for no special reason, but simply decided she was an opportune target on seeing her walking alone at night. After keeping her locked up for several days, he restrained her, sewed her mouth shut, and severed her fingers and toes with a box, of, uh, with a box cutter while she was still conscious. As she screamed silently behind her sealed lips, he proceeded to her wrists, her ankles, her elbows, her knees, working his way inward slowly and methodically. His victim constantly wavered in and out of consciousness. Her ordeal continued until she died of blood loss. That is insane. Uh, Najim... Wait, hold on. Najima dismembered the rest of her body and disposed of it behind his home in the Sumida River before cleaning his storeroom and returning to his everyday routine, as if nothing had happened. The brutality of his actions shocked the nation when they were eventually reported. I wonder if this is actual... ...history. If this was an actual case. Once apprehended, Najima readily divulged the details of the murder, but was less willing to expand his motive. When asked, he would only break down in tears, saying, I don't know what came over me. I know it was wrong. In the end, the police could extract nothing more from him than expressions of remorse. Although the efficiency of his methods strongly suggested he had committed similar crimes in the past, no corroborating evidence ever came to light. Najima was sen sentenced to life in prison at his first hearing. The sentence was imposed with no appeal from the defendant. I do wonder if this is an actual case uh, or not. I know it's. I know this is supposed to be fiction, but it's like it's also in Tokyo, and I'm wondering if it's like some of these things are taken from real life as well. Persons of interest. Fumichika Najima. Probably not if he shows up here. <laughs> the man who made headlines over two decades ago as the perpetrator of the brutal killings known as the Najima murders. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just parting around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sunk to the bottom of the river. They combed the riverbed, but only they only ever found pieces. Everything else must have rotted and flowed to the sea. Out to the sea. Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her fell ill. A sorry story for everyone involved, huh? It's funny. Everyone figures the river's filthy already, so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I wouldn't want to go rooting around down there myself. That's right. Which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. The times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. You see, back then, if you chopped a body up into tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rot quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, Fumichika Najima, the man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it couldn't have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered in the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders in the end. But 
the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder? That same thought spread through everyone's mind, and they started to avoid this area. So really, this river has been rank with corruption for decades now. Or at least, that's how it seems to me. Well, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all the darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Najima murders. But how could I not? After all, I was the one who found the hand. The police actually wrote me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Najima to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Damn. Huh. I guess it's, it just wasn't the killer's day. Was we getting an ad starting soon? Um... I don't think it was a super good idea to, put you, to Google something. Oh no. I, I should I should probably have said don't d don't don't Google that. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't really think about it because I'm not the type of person that Google's everything. So I didn't even think about it. Um but this music is haunting, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's nice when there is some music though. It sets the tone. When it's quiet like this, it's like, uh, can we get some more sound, please? <laughs> uh, there has been something similar to that, but it's actually worse. And you don't actually usually Google everything either, but. Mm. I see, I see. Yeah, I tend to, to Google very little because I'm very paranoid. <laughs> I'm a very paranoid person. Um, because I feel like everything that I Google will be tracked back to me, which, I mean, it can, but it's just... Even if it, it's completely innocent as well, I just get really paranoid. It's like, I feel like I'm being watched all the time. Which, you know, is also true that we are, but it's like, it's not because I think I, it's not because I think very highly of myself. But it's just, I don't know. Many times it's easier to ask others than Google because sometimes uh, people can explain better than what Google can. True, true. I also prefer if people Google things for me instead of doing it myself. <laughs> Many times, what do you want to ask is that like, you don't know how to Google. Hmm. You searched and found something about a guy who did some bad things in Tokyo in the 80s, decided against posting here. Hmm. Well, this is in the 80s now, and this was 20 years ago. So it would be in the 60s, uh, I would assume. I'm not saying you should Google that instead. I'm just saying it's like it can't have been the same thing. Um. Um, and sometimes you even forget Google exists. <laughs> Nowadays, with all the AI stuff, the results can be yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't really Google a lot of stuff. I really don't. Duck, duck, go is the way. Screw Google. I just don't really use anything really. Well, I mean, if it's something specific that I know I'm gonna find, like a, a website that I necessarily don't remember, like. Is it dot .com, dot .net, you know, those types of things I Google. <laughs> it's haunting in a good way, like it really fits well, makes the vibe creepier. Mm. Googling horrific crimes in the 60s once... <laughs> hey, do it at your own risk. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back from the ads, so we're gonna continue reading. 
Sometimes I'm wondering if he resents me for it. There's more about the river. The Samita River. I have not, nothing but awful memories of it. Okay, I guess we, we did everything about the, the related to the river. Um... Let's see. Okay, let's talk. Is something wrong? Not really. It just struck me. It's been 20 years since the Najima murders. So it has. Not to spook you or anything, but I thought you might be interested in knowing. Hmm? Life in prison doesn't always ma mean... Life in prison doesn't always mean life. There's precedent for first-time offenders being allowed out on parole after 20 years. Oh. Only if they're found to show remorse and the desire to reform themselves, of course. Sometimes you wish you weren't doing stuff on impulse and or had more impulses regarding the cleaning or taking care of yourself. Mm. Yeah. If you see the Hello Kitty murder pop up, don't read the details. Watch a true crime YouTube video about it. We're getting to this day. Oh no. That just gives me. Uh, I imagine what it could be then, just based on the on what it what it is, what it what it sounds like. Even when the game just said the victim got picked just because lonely in the dark is like so upsetting and you don't know what you were expecting by googling stuff like this. Yeah, don't don't do it. Don't do it. That's right. I'm impressed you know so much. Still, it's hard for someone with a criminal record to reintegrate it into society. I hear they have been trying to fix that recently, matching inmates with jobs and accommodations. Or accommodation. Oh, really? They keep an eye on them, of course. And making them report in for regular checkups. But to avoid discrimination, they keep the inmates' records a secret from everyone but their employers. Why would anyone want to employ that dude, though? But that makes me think that, seeing as he was here... With a picture and everything that makes me think that he might show up in the game because they've even bothered putting a face on him you know these are not the ro rabbit holes you want to go down yeah why does he have jiggle physics on his butt <laughs> You don't know what you were expecting. You should have expected something butt related, though, to be fair. They even give particularly notorious criminals new identities so they won't be recognized in the workplace. My. The way you put it. It's like you're saying Fumichika. Fumichika and Ajima could be out on parole right now. Back in society under a new name, with nobody any the wiser. It's possible. As it happens, a little birdie told me about a big name making parole a few months back. I don't know if that was Najima, but our discussion just now did bring it to mind. I see. How unsettling. Now that you mention it, I just remembered something too. What was it? I was passing Komagata High School a little while ago when I saw someone. A janitor, I think. And I could have sworn he reminded me of Fumichiga Najima. Oh? 
He looked a little different after 20 years. Much thinner than I remember, too. I told myself I was just, I was just seeing things. But perhaps... Perhaps it was him after all. Hmm. So, what next? The big question now is what the rest of the curse bears are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the seven mysteries. Hmm. Also, I'm going to I'm going to end when we get to like the next chapter. Which shouldn't be too long. I'm just getting really tired. My voice is so so tired right now. Um Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the seven mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bears will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Suspend? I guess. You cannot currently progress any further. Once your situation has changed, select resume to try again. Pressing suspend will return you to the story chart. Okay. So that means that we need to go back here. And... Say different things, perhaps? I don't know. Um, You're very upset with yourself? No, why are you so upset with yourself? Sort that all. <laughs> You're unwillingly very empathetic to the point of imagining yourself in the people's shoes, even in horrific crimes like the Hello Kitty one. Obviously, I won't say any details, but what well, that poor woman went through still haunts you. No joke. And with context, the nickname they gave the case makes sense, but it annoys the fuck out of you because it makes it sound so much less brutal and more fluffy than what actually happened. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the type of person- I can't- I, I don't really feel like listening to, uh... Um true crime and stuff uh i i get the appeal because it's interesting but at the same time i know that it, it's not for me i can't i can't do it it's like i don't mind uh a lot of horrible stuff and gore and all that all that stuff as long as it's fiction but as long as when it's real life i just i just can't really do it but fiction that's totally fine um I don't mind, uh, I don't mind then, but when I know it's actually happened, it makes me unwell. <laughs> um, so I, I don't, I don't want to do it. Some true crime solve also make them without a lot of regard to the victims and stuff. I don't really know much about that, but I, I will take your word for it. You can't watch true crime anymore. Once you hit a certain age, new very real mortality became in forefront. You get super bad anxiety listening to true crime. Yeah, I can understand that. It's it's not for me. <laughs> it is not for me. I guess it all auto saved when we went to the menu because it says. 1 23 32 and it's 1 26 now so it's been only three minutes but i'm still gonna do an extra save anyway <laughs> just in case you see um oh, but yeah this this game is so interesting though i do i do really like it it's uh it's intriguing And I also feel like it is a good thing to um, to do once a week because it's like, you know, it's very exhausting reading for like over four hours straight. Um, 
because you know I'm reading chat as well and also like the game <laughs> it's like a lot of text <laughs> there's a lot of text um but it's so interesting it's so much fun and the way it's all tied together it's super cool oh like I I was hoping this would be a good game and I I saw that it had overwhelming reviews as well um when it first uh well I've had it on my wish list since before it was released but I just didn't want to I don't know I didn't really find the time to play it <laughs> so I'm glad that we're doing it now because it is a cool game and not saying this because it's me and my stream but I do highly recommend going and checking out the first VOD on YouTube from from when I played this last Saturday to get like the context and everything because it is such a cool game the story and everything and the the mechanics it's really cool and it's i know that it's if you haven't been here from the beginning it can be really confusing knowing what's going on but it is so cool <laughs> or you can also play it yourself this does look great love these mystery visual novels mm. It is, it is pretty cool. What if it would have auto-saved at 122.22? That would have been cool. It would have been cool. It's not really polite to step on all people like this, but just want to see the bulb on his head. <laughs> Why did you post that one, Ryan? <laughs> uh, <laughs> poor, yeah, you, you remember which one it was. I... I <laughs> It is very heavy on the reading. Definitely understand it wearing your voice out. Yeah, so it's it's something that I, I can only do once per week. Uh, I feel like, but this is what it was like when I I played the Ghost Pia game as well. It was also very exhausting reading it, but it was also so much fun. It was a lot of fun. There we go. And it's it's a Squeenix game. Stepping on all people, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been good though. It's been fun. I've been enjoying it. Honestly, I I didn't think it would end up being even cooler than what it was. So it's good. It's good. I like it. Um, it was funny. Mm. <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, I I would never remember that number. <laughs> I'm just saying it now. <laughs> uh, you fixed it. Nice, nice. Oh. But yeah, so for those who don't know, on Monday, I will actually stream. I don't stream, I never stream on Mondays, but we're doing this Save and Sound, which is a music festival on Steam. Um, so, and I also got some, I was thinking, I got some keys for doing it, some some game keys. And I was thinking of doing some some giveaways as well. Uh, on on stream during but yeah I, I recommend checking out the link to get more information about the the schedule and everything what's gonna be on the on the program uh, recommend I recommend but yeah I will also want to do some some giveaways then uh, I have some ideas about you know Because I, well, I, I will let you guys know in the in the in the mod channel maybe what my idea is. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be good though. I rec I I I I look forward to it. I look forward to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Monday is gonna be an exhausting day though because it's gonna be over six hours. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be over six hours. So, uh, but. 
I think... I think it's gonna be worth it. I wouldn't have uh, said yes to it if I didn't want to do it, so... Um, but yeah, so that's, uh... It won't be as long of a wait until next stream as it usually is, because usually it is... Um... Wednesday. And we did finish... We did finish uh, Near Replicants yesterday. While we got the first ending. But... That means that we're gonna go for ending B. And then we're gonna be playing as Kaina. And that's gonna be fun. So that's when we're gonna start on Wednesday. But yeah, the... 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 the stream that I'm gonna be doing on Monday... With the event is... Um, if it goes well, I will also do it on Tuesday. But we'll see. It also depends on how tired I am. <laughs> um, but I, we'll see. We'll see. It's definitely going to be Monday, though. Anything extra will be... Well, we'll take it a... We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> what was kind of the one with the thingy thing? Uh, the thingy thing. Uh, I mean, sure, there was a thingy thing. Or two. I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't know which one you mean, though, but there, there was something. The same thing as the sister? I don't know, you mean blonde hair? I mean, I feel like, well, not blonde, but white hair? I guess that's the thing in all the near games. All the all the main characters have uh, <laughs> platinum blonde hair or white hair or gray hair. Um, playing as the best character. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited. I didn't know that that would happen. Um, so I am looking forward to that. Uh, I didn't think that it would be uh, her that we played as, but that's gonna be good. I'm looking forward to it. The thing that made this stuff, did the stuff the thing, that, you know, I, I that doesn't really help me, <laughs> I have to say, it doesn't really help me. <laughs> She's the white hair character in her undercrack, or, yeah, she was in her underwear. Um, <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's just, it, it's just funny, but also, I, I, I don't want to make fun of you, but it's just, it's just funny, you know? But yeah, we had two companions. Um, one was the the was Emil who was floating around, Skelly boy, and then it was Kaina in her underwear, <laughs> in the in the baby doll. Um, Not the email, the email, the, or the the book. Yeah, yeah. It was it was the woman. You are correct. That is the one. We're gonna be playing as her then. So that's gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that happens on Wednesday. And then we'll see what happens on on with Monday. Uh, if that goes well, and if there's gonna be something on Tuesday. And women are cool. Women are cool. You're damn right. You're damn right, Orion. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have one with a sign that says yes in Norwegian, Black Cats? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Let's see if we can find someone to raid, though. Hmm. Hold on. Aside from stealing the moon, women are pretty great. Hey, it belongs to us. 
we were the 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 people of the moon from the start look at the time it's not that bad it's not even 2 a.m well i guess it is 2 a.m for you well no well, i guess you're two hours ahead of me now two hours of sleep for today you guess wait what do you mean oh yeah you work tomorrow oh no don't no don't work on sundays that's not okay Let's see. Damn, that's bright. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. um there's so many to choose from, though. Oh. Okay, I actually wanna. I actually wanna raid Jose because no, no, he's he's raiding out. Never mind. We can't raid Jose. Um, we can raid, uh, whatever it is. Work in college? You have college on Sunday? But it's the weekend. I mean, work, that's different. But school on a Sunday? That feels... Strange. Hideous do not work. Exactly, exactly. Um, I'm having real issues choosing who or deciding who to, to rate. Uh, it's difficult. I can't decide. Oh, you know what? We, we're gonna raid Toonie then. We're gonna raid Toonie. He's playing uh, Final Fantasy 13. I don't think I've ever seen any Final Fantasy 13 gameplay, I have to say. That could be interesting. But yeah, let us go go say hi to Toonie Boons. He was also here earlier. Uh stopping by. Mm -mm -mm. Toonie 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 Boons. Oh, there you are. Okay, let us let us raid. Let's do it. Um there are too many people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're in college for everyone. Here is from Sunday to Thursday. So Thursday is your Friday? That's so weird. I don't know. I don't think I've ever heard of that being a thing anywhere else. It, it sounds it sounds wrong. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raid Toonie. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I will see you in the Discord if I don't see you um, in any streams or anything before stream again on Monday. But I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend. And take good care of yourselves. Hydrate. Get enough rest. And play all the, all the games. All of them. Every single one. Just saying. All of them. But yeah. Take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye. I'll see you.